one's out sick and one has uh, a business conflict. Uh, we also want to welcome Elaine Lazarus joining us, uh, who will be joining us for these meetings until we have a replacement for Ms. Burke. Uh, we are live tonight. We're going live every night now. And for those of you watching, we're holding the commercials to the end, so we, there's no interruption. Um, and the first item on the agenda is a continued public hearing, Saddle Hill Road Stormwater Management Permit, and the applicant has asked for a continuance. Um, so we need to, so why don't we see when we can do it and then we'll do a vote on it. They want February 12th. What does that agenda look like? Um, nothing with a date on it yet, or time, so. Okay, I think we've got, I'll take a look up back here. We've got um, holding off premise assigned. As we can actually probably do it at the start, 7.30. I'll make a motion to, uh, to continue the public hearing to the February 12th meeting at 7.30 p.m. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, <laughs> abstain, so carry. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to uh, move up the business items to be considered by the board at any time. The first item is a request for minor modification to the approved site plan at 45 South Street, and the applicant uh, is here. Uh, good evening. Um, here, why don't you sit at the table? Okay. And then the camera is over there. So if you can, when you want to show the, um, yeah, that might work. You can tilt down. So why don't you introduce yourself and kind of walk us through the uh, the application? Good evening, Peter Bemis, Engineering Design Consultants. And uh, on this plan is our as built. It's the as built that we submitted to the building department as part of our um, occupancy permit for the facility. Um, I have added some features to it that um, were not on the original plan because what we wanted to try to do is show the board where the deviations were from the approved plan to the final plan. So I've included pictures along the outer uh, perimeter of the plan so you could see the as built conditions for the site. Uh, but generally, the commentary that came back from the building inspector was we do not stripe the parking spaces to the rear of the building in this area. Um, when we set out to permit this facility with you about a year ago, it was a multi-tenant building. Um, we have one tenant. It is the CrossFit uh, Resilience Group that is in the building, occupying the entire building on a long-term lease basis. So the changes that we made were really to be more site-specific for their use in having the facility. Um, they're not a company that needs a lot of loading and activities in that rear area. They actually have um, some of the large tires that the, um, uh, the, the people at the facility use to kind of move around. Um, so that the, actually the tires are back here. Uh, so they did not want to stripe the spaces there. They actually striped them here along this edge. So 10 parking spaces were displaced from this area and five spaces were put at this area. Um, they, if you've ever been here uh, during their activities during the day, there is more parking <coughs> than they have a demand for. Do we have, uh, I always have a concern where we reduce parking spaces. Were the parking spaces that were uh, specified originally what was required? Uh, well, it would have been part of that, yes sir, and, and they can easily go back. We just did not, we could strike them and just ignore them. They just didn't want to put them on the ground because they didn't want someone to park there. Um, that's why they, they were just left off. Yeah, well the concern is you've taken away 10 spots. Like, I did check the, the original filing and they were far in excess. Of okay, the they were far in excess. The entire site. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank um, you. So, so that would have been the, the, the first deviation. Um, the, the next would have been um, the front entry. So uh, at the front entry, they, we had a handicapped parking space on this side and a walk that, that linked the site. Instead, they just put all three handicapped parking spaces on this side of the site in front of the front door. So they all, the handicapped egress requirements are met with one van and two regular handicapped spaces. Um, and then the walkway you know, comes into the building uh, through that area. The, uh, 
the next change would have um, been? I have a question about that, actually. Sure, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> uh, if it converts to a different kind of use, I wonder about having all the handicap spots in one corner of the building. Uh, well, we Do would you know have done it that way. No matter, we have them in in this area anyway. No matter all, what, right? And all the eco stores are going to be on the side of the building. If they ever do a multi-tenant in the future, we did set it up to be three possibility possibility to be three tenants. Okay. Um, but we we only have one for for a fairly long term. Yeah. The way this situation set up, <coughs> so that's why they just clustered them there. In the future, if the other doors go in, those spaces are going to be properly located. Oh, so they'll be changed. Well, no, the, the entrance door, if they were to add two more entrance doors, yes. they would be down here. Okay. But you'd still have the handicapped spaces there. Okay. Uh, and, and obviously full access. Easy yes, access. exactly. There would be full ADA access up to those doors. For clarification through the chair. Um, you said they. Are you referring to the tenant? You're referring to the They, workers? owner and tenant, and general contractor all mutually met at the site to make these decisions. We, we delivered an as-built to the building department that was part of occupancy and need to resolve these changes because from the building inspector's point of view, he was looking at an approved plan and saw deviations and wanted to make sure that we presented them to the board so that you folks would agree with those changes not being significant. And again, for, for clarification, uh, the original plan showed two handicap accesses on the southern side and one on the eastern Just side? Just the spaces. When we, when we distributed the spaces, we had one on this side and two on this side. But at, this, at, at the same point, by putting all three together, we could have drawn it that way. It actually was a, was a little bit more efficient the way we drew it versus the way they built it. You use more, more area to do the three together. And, and just to, to kind of summarize from what I'm hearing is that someone didn't follow the instructions that you guys set forth that we had approved and now you're asking for permission to leave it that way. It's right. Again, it's a mi minor change. I mean, things do change in the field. Um, I don't think that the building inspector went out one day and, and all of a sudden saw this and, and, and thought it being negative. He just wants to have an acknowledgement from the planning board that this change is an acceptable change. The reason I ask that is because there, when you have two handicap spaces and, and there's a space in between, uh, you can't really have three because one side or another, they get restricted from how their doors open. I agree. Uh, so That's why it's the way it's drawn is correct. And I, and I think the original discussion uh, at the time concerned not having it this way. So as from what I remember, um, I'd like to have it be the right way. Um, if I can clarify, I, I think that they put the spacer spaces in, so it's not, the third space is not, has space on either side. Right, so, so when we did this originally, the, the, the van space was on this side, and, and that's all. It, it just, it uses up a lot of space in front of the building. We normally would not do it that way. We put the van space off to the it's side. It's more efficient as you so That's the way we drew it, but the way they've done it, they're, they're actually making it easier to get in and out of the building actually, and I, I personally don't have a problem with it. We just would not have normally drawn it this way as a multi-tenant building, where it's a single tenant, and this is how they plan to use the site. It makes perfect sense. Um, I've been here on, on a number of occasions, and those spaces are open. <laughs> they typically are going to be open. So I don't think you can say that going forward. Um, well, no, no, they're, they're there because you need them by color. Right. Um, I just would prefer to have it be the right way. Um, that's all. The original way, but okay. The original, but it's it's not a wrong way. The way they built it. That's all I wanted to make sure for the record. It's it's perfectly fine actually the way they did it. I just didn't know they were making the change. Well, in this drawing, as I'm looking at it, I see that there's two spaces between three handicap spots, and as I understand it, you need three spaces in addition to the three handicap spots because. There'll be van to van to van at the worst case scenario, and uh, it could be a car park next to the westernmost space, uh, which defeats the purpose of having a handicapped space. No, no, sir. This is how the handicapped spaces are um, distributed and how they're they're marked. This is the, there's a single space is identified as a van. It's eight feet wide, and then it's an eight foot aisle for another van. Um, but the other two spaces are just regular handicapped spaces. If I may, please. Frank, if you look down to the left side, do you have this in front of you? Is that a handout or is that on, online? It was, there's a picture on the one, two, three, four, fourth spot down. 
and it, it brings clarity to the to what he's trying to tell. So the in between space between the left two on the left side on the left side is wider, right? so it makes sense. Okay. Okay. I can't so tell from this distance. Yeah, that. <laughs> that's all right. It kind of thank you. You're welcome. Well, it kind of helps. Thank you. Okay. Check. It's on page nine hundred sixty. That was an unhappy surprise when yes. I opened that yes. So then the next uh, change would have been at the rear of the building. Uh, because it was a single tenant that's there, they put a single stair in, in the middle of the building. Um, there is the ability to put the other two stairs in that we've shown you in the original site plan. Again, because there's only one tenant, they only needed one egress stair from the rear of the building. So that's another change. To that point, Mr. Chair, if that change comes about, as, as we, as Frank has pointed out, that futuristic, and you yourself, uh, futuristically going forward, if other tenants go in there, is that subject to change? We would have to come back to the building department anyways, and if the building inspector deemed it requirement that we're making a change, we would come back to you as the board to show you that we're going to make that change to that to this building. Okay, so we, what, I'm, what I'm just saying is that in our notations, this approval or disapproval or whatever comes about, right. that we want to know that, that going forward, if there's a change like that, that it's in, the, in what we state as being the change to, to look at. Yes, I, I would see that you folks will be acknowledging these, hopefully acknowledging and agreeing to these as minor changes this evening, which would allow the building inspector then issue the occupancy permit for the building. Yeah. And then also being of record for the project, because this as built goes on file with the building plan, mm -hmm. then any future change to this building, because there, there may be a multi-tenant use in the future, yep. go through the whole process again as needed. If needed. Sure, because you may come, come in with a use that has a parking demand in excess of what the facility could have. You, you could have that situation, and we would have to come up with more parking spaces to support that use. Right, to bring it back to where it was. Yeah. Um, then the last part was a uh, storage container. Uh, we didn't identify a permanent location for a storage container. It is freestanding. I did show you a picture of it on the plan, uh, but it is there. And um, we did have a separate uh, dumpster enclosure with a multi-tenant building. Uh, they have a very small uh, dumpster on the side of the building there. It's really just the size of a trash can, you know, larger size trash can, which is the other tenants have the same thing outside. So again, it's not a major deviation, but I wanted the board to know that if you know there's a multi-tenant building, then they can go back and put the enclosure in that we had proposed. Otherwise, it's just a small uh, facility at the site. And again, there's a picture showing that too. Uh, that's it. Uh, so we believe they're all minor changes, but again, from building's perspective, I think the parking spaces are probably the most important one for them, and that's why I started with that. Uh, we do have five spaces less than what we propose to have. So one question through the chair. The, the dumpster you talk about, right, it's a small one. You have to say if, the, if that changes, but it's uh, a large, is there any way to... I guess what I'm saying is that, that even if it was larger, um, it is small, but even if it was larger, it's still, it's not visible from anywhere. And I, I, we put the enclosure in because it was a multi-tenant building yeah. and we wanted to have control over that. And that's why you folks would want to have it as well. But from a single tenant perspective, it, it's just really not a, a need. And if you look at all the other ones, at the rest of the other site, they're just in the back of the building. So I would hope you see them all as minor. Thank you. Sounds like they could easily be changed if they were if we had to. Yes. Any other comments? Uh, just from a process point of view, we are becoming, or we have become very adamant about changes that are made without coming to the board. That anyone who is in town and building in town or anyone who does projects any place know buildings supposed to be built for the plants. And we are very open to coming in and entertaining changes, but I want it known that whatever we vote on tonight should not be taken as a um, uh, approval of people making changes and then coming in and asking for approval for the changes. Sir, so I, as you I do projects understand. in town, please let people know that that is the case. So can I just ask one clarifying question? You said you needed you need these, this approval to get the occupancy permit? Right, well, they're working on a temporary occupancy at this point. They so are. we're looking to bring the final occupancy, which 
could then close out the building permit uh, okay. matter. All right, because they're certainly using the space. Oh, yes. And have been for oh, And they have, right. Yeah. Well, the, again, the disconnect here was the fact that we submitted an as built, and I think there was some concern about just going ahead without your board being aware of the changes. And again, I think they were all minor in scope. I'm sorry that they didn't advance them prior to impl implementing them. Uh, but I, I will definitely make sure in the future that we're at least cognizant of that in this process. For this. Thank you. So basically, we have to take two votes. One is vote that it is a minor modification. Sorry. Any discussion from the board? Any discussion from the public? Take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, so carry. And the second vote is to uh, approve the modifications. Hold on a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. So carried. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good luck, Mr. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, second item, uh, for those who are coming late, we're considering the items that can be considered at any time during the meeting. Except, except resignation by Aman Hadri from the Zoning Advisory Committee. We have to vote on that. Okay. I make a motion to accept the resignation of the matter. I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? So carry. Uh, I'm going to hold up to um, the zoning articles because we only have a, f a few minutes left before the next public hearing. Uh, did everyone have a chance to review and vote to submit the annual report? Review the annual report. Yeah, I had one question. And that is oh, the only question I had actually <coughs> was when we um, when we approved the water tower construction that's listed on the annual report, mm -hmm. we had just included and asked that they um, include the board of health in a remediation plan for the soil. And I don't know if we heard back from that. It just tra it doesn't necessarily have to go in the report. Okay. I just wanted to capture that and find out what had become of that. Can we check on that? Any other comments, changes? I did have a couple. Okay. Changes. And this is page 979 of our package. <laughs> 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 yeah, is it 7 o'clock, sir? 7 o'clock, sir. On the, the first page where it says subdivisions granted, I would say subdivisions Okay. Well, um, and then on the second page, um, on the um, moratorium for marijuana, I would say adopt a temporary moratorium on recreation. Okay. Any discussion? Get a motion? I'll move to approve as amended. Get a second. Any discussion? And let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. So carry. Okay, we've got um, six minutes. So why don't we start taking a look? We'll consider the first um, you know, the Zoning Advisory Committee <coughs> recommendation. Um, what page is that on? That is page 969. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, how do you do that? I gotta ask you. Yeah. Actually, just keep us. Just so, keep for those who are wondering, we got close to a thousand, just about a thousand page package to review uh, for this meeting. So, um, now you know how we spend our weekends. <laughs> Fran, do you want to touch on that? Um, I mean, I can walk through some of the uh, articles from Zach uh, in front of this group. Uh, you want to start with the first one? Yeah. Special permit duration. So here, it's really just to conform with the mass general laws. Uh, you can see there that the change specifies permits for up to two years. Um, 
originally two years, the, the change allows special permits to be granted for three years. Um, and still to come by the uh, on a board level, but the, the purpose behind this was to align with the Mass State laws, straight up. So, yeah. I just read through it, and it, it sounds like the actual time for the special permit will be decided each time by the board of skills. That's one thing to change because they could make it two years mm -hmm. or three years. Thank you. Like the situation. And just to clarify, point. we're going to vote tonight uh, to put it on the warrant. We're not going to vote tonight to recommend it. That will be subsequent to a uh, public hearing that we will have on. We already have a date on that. Second meeting in February. Second meeting in February, 26th. And after that, we'll do the vote. So tonight is just a vote, put it on the warrant, um, at kind of as a placeholder, so to speak. And then a recommendation will come, yay or nay, after the uh, uh, hearing on the 26th. Any discussion on that? I missed what page it is on the document. It's uh, 969. Thank you. I had loaded my document on a different computer. I had to reload it on this one. So <laughs> take a little bit of a while. No comments. Do you take a motion to put it on the warrant? It, sorry, I do have a question. I, I'm going to take a while to get to that page. So I just give a quick little summary. You can slide, you can slide the little at the bottom. The little thing at the bottom. Little gizmo at the bottom. But then it takes a minute to load. Yeah. Can we since we're going to be voting? Can somebody just have a quick, give a quick little summary of what we're voting on? Sorry, I'm sorry. It, it, it's essentially to align with the new state law change, mass general law, okay. where it grants a special permit um, for up to three years, uh, but the Board of Appeals uh, does have the okay. two years. So that is what it is. The first couple of these. So you thought housekeeping? Yeah, yeah no. right. I mean, no. the first few of these are all housekeeping yep. aligned with the state. Okay. So I'm caught up now. Sorry, I was grabbing the iPad when you were giving the summary. Up. No worries. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I think there's a motion in the second for the first article, correct? Second. So let's, did we, do we have a actual motion on the table yet? Mm -hmm. I don't think we have. I'll move it. Move. To put on, it's second. just to put it on the warrant. Just, just to put it on the warrant. That's correct. Oh, uh, yeah. Any further discussion? Any discussion from the public? Let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, so carried. And what we will do is we'll, uh, at 7.30 is the public hearing, Chamberlain Whalen Definitive S Subdivision. Are they, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are they outside? Yeah, they're outside. Oh. Okay. Hopefully, if uh, they want to come in, To, based on her familiarity with uh, submission one to continue as the uh, project liaison for uh, submission two. Uh -huh. Inappropriate lack of protective instincts. Um, as is our uh, process, we do have an agenda that we follow so that everybody is well informed of where we are and the progress we've made as we go through the process. Um, 
very often we have an overview at the beginning, um, but we have had a change in personnel and we don't necessarily have that overview today, um, but I'm sure that we will have the planning department's input at our next meeting on this. Um, so uh, we'll start with the uh, project introduction and features of the site with the applicant and the engineer speaking. Um, we won't get the Department of Land Use comments tonight, um, but we will probably get to consultant reviews. Um, we very often look at the agenda uh, first once the applicant has presented to see if there are uh, things that uh, the board members or the public would like to add to the agenda. So I think that that is probably the, the bite that we're gonna get through tonight, but we will do our best. So with that, I'll ask the applicant to go ahead and introduce the project. I'll start. Kathy Sherry from REC Hopkinton. <coughs> I'm here tonight with Paul Mastriani, the property owner and applicant, um, as well as Mike Dryden from Bowler Engineering, the architect of our site plan. Um, so as most everyone can probably recall, we were before the planning board last year for seeking a special permit for an open space and landscape preservation development for a 32 lot subdivision to be located on the 102 acres that Mr. Mastriani owns between Whalen Road and Chamberlain Street. That special permit was denied by the board, so we're, we're back here seeking approval for a definitive subdivision plan for a 32 lot conventional subdivision. So having spent several months during the open space special permit process, multiple meetings with the planning board, ComCom, data review, and obviously hearing the concerns raised by the neighbors, we did incorporate a lot of those comments and the feedback received during that process into the plan that you have before you tonight and that we submitted. So this design is consistent with the conventional subdivision concept plan that we did show you briefly at the very last open space public hearing that we were at. And actually the, this conventional per plan is somewhat of a hybrid plan in that overall the development complies with the zoning bylaws the use and dimensional requirements. It also complies with any everything under the subdivision regs and regulations, while also preserving about 45 acres of the site as open space. So it, it would be our intent that those, <coughs> those 45 acres would be permanently protected, preserving the wetlands, the streams, the potential vernal pool, as well as some of the historic features that we've discussed previously on the site. The common open space, again, about abuts town-owned land with the high school and Berry Acres, so that would allow for the continuation and extension of the trail system. So we are proposing as part of our plan to relocate and connect trails that currently run through private property, relocating that into the common open space, <coughs> as well as improving some trail conditions within the wetlands. So that's the open space side high level of the plan. The proposed 32 single family homes would be located within the agricultural zoned land within 102 acres. And that would be accessed through what we're proposing is an extension of the Whalen Road cul-de-sac as well as an extension of the Chamberlain Street cul-de-sac being connected with a gated emergency access road. Our plan also calls for improvements and widening on Chamberlain Street. So we have requested several waivers from the provisions of the subdivision rules and regs regarding the street width, uh, sidewalks, as well as dead ends to support the road design that we'll provide an overview on tonight. Uh, due to concerns about the increased traffic with the new development, we did have MDM traffic consultants conduct a detailed traffic study looking at the impacts to the surrounding roadways and intersections, and we did submit that with our application, and that was reviewed by data as well. I'll point out that the project requires two wetland crossings. We have filed an NOI with the Conservation Commission um, for review concurrently with these hearings, and actually our first meeting is tonight um, after this one. So with that said, just to kind of recap and intro it, I'll turn it over to Mike Dryden just to give you a high level overview of the site plan and design. Would this be a good location, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just allow me more. <coughs> Hopefully the camera can pick that up. Thank you, Kathy. 
again, Michael Dryden, project manager with Bowler Engineering. Allow me to just give you a, a sort of a high level overview. I realize that we have a detailed agenda, but I think I just want to spend a few minutes to put things into context for the board. Uh, the plan that's before you here is at a scale of one inch equals 120 feet. You see the north aisle on the upper left, so generally north is to the left of the page. So the, uh, the school property is in this location off to the east. Uh, additional town of Parkington property on the west side of a small sliver of Boston Edison. Um, I think we're generally familiar with the site and, and, and its context. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about existing conditions, some of the constraints that we have, and then give you, a, again, a high-level overview of the proposed plan. So we're about 103 acres, um, as previously stated. Approximately uh, 20 acres is located within the office park district. So that is this square section that you see here. Generally speaking, the vast majority of the property is agriculturally zoned. Uh, and again, of course, single-family residential is an allowed use within that zone. Uh, a little bit about the physical characteristics of the site. Uh, Topography-wise, uh, very, uh, I guess, unusual undulating topography. Uh, generally speaking, water flows from the uh, east to the west. There's um, approximately 40 feet of overall topograph uh, topographic relief on the south end of the site, which sounds like a lot of relief, but it's spread out over quite a vast area. Uh, on the north end of the site, you can see the lighter color is the wetlands. I'll talk about that in a moment, but this is a large upland area that sort of um, is the most um, ideal area for development, if you will, it's a ridge. And then there is another ridge located on the west side of the site here. So again, very uh, undulating topography. In the light colors you see uh, the wetland resource areas, there's about 23 and a half approximately acres uh, of wetland resource area. So um, just under a quarter of the site uh, is resource area. We do have an intermittent stream that runs through the center of the site. And we'll talk about how that relates to the proposed uh, project in a moment. Uh, the site is entirely wooded, uh, undeveloped at, at this point in time. Soils, uh, we did an, an extensive soil exploration program out here, not only to prove out on-site sewage disposal, but to analyze soils <laughs> in the proposed uh, stormwater management areas. So we generally have hydrologic soil group D soils. Uh, you'll hear us talk a little bit more about this as we go through Baby Group's comments in the future. Uh, we do have a shallow groundwater condition in some areas. Uh, generally speaking, we have groundwater anywhere between two and eight feet. So our upland areas, we have an appreciable amount of soil uh, above groundwater. In other areas, quite shallow, which you can imagine, again, with the resource areas that, I, that I've outlined and that you see in light green. The project site is located within the, within the Water Resource Protection Overlay District. However, it really doesn't uh, uh, come into play. Again, um, single family residential uses are allowed within that overlay district. Um, there's an exception within that, the regulations for the overlay district that allow earthwork within four feet. All of the things that are excluded <coughs> or precluded for other projects are essentially exempt for this project, so I just wanted to, to let that be known. I can interrupt you one second. There sure. are some empty chairs <coughs> up here, so if somebody wants to grab a chair, there are enough seats. Okay. I feel the chair, could I, can I have the, I'm mean, not your name, sorry. Mike. Can, can you just tell us the last thing you just said? I lost it in translation. Uh, regarding the water resource overlay district? The overlay district excludes certain activities and the, the single family residential nature of this project is exempt. So they're allowed in the resource right. district. Things like excavation within four feet of groundwater and, and things like that are ex otherwise excluded but exempt for single family residential use and its associated infrastructure, roadways, utilities, things of that nature. Did I make that clear? Any questions regarding existing conditions? I'll, I'll move right into giving you a high-level overview of the proposed plan. Uh, so starting with access, what you see here at the north end of the plan is Wayland Road. There's an existing cul-de-sac there now. Uh, the proposal from the north is uh, approximately, what is the number? I think it's um, 1,300 linear feet to a terminus and a cul-de-sac with 80-foot diameter cul-de-sac, 22 feet of pavement. So that roadway extension of Wayland affords frontage for 12 lots. 
12 conforming lots. And when I say conforming, I mean, in this case, within the agricultural district, 200 feet of <coughs> frontage required, 60,000 square feet minimum area. Um, not that it applies to the plans, but the setbacks are 60 feet for the frontage and rear and side 30 feet. So none of those, the ones in, off of uh, Whalen, are uh, encroaching on any buffers. Is that right? No, the lots or the roadway? The, the lots, I'm sorry. No, no, not within the no-touch buffer zone. Okay. That is correct. Uh, can you tell me what the linear feet is of the existing Whalen Road, just for comparison? Uh, that is a great question. Um, I don't have that figure, but I can certainly provide that for you. Okay. Uh, th that would be great. I could guess, but I, I would probably be wrong. What's the question? How long is Whalen Road right now? Existing. Existing. Uh, it appears to me, and I'm just going to go again off the scale of this plan, but as I mentioned, uh, the extension is about 1,300 feet. Yeah. And I'm just roughly scaring, scaring from the locust map. I would say 1,500 plus or minus. It's almost similar to what you see here, a little bit longer than this section of proposed. Road. <laughs> I'm going to write again, approximately. Yeah, I, I can give you more details on that. So. so now let's shift over to the north end of the uh, south end of the site. Excuse me, Chamberlain Street is here. There's an improved section of Chamberlain that ends right about here, and I realize it's probably difficult to see on this plan. The Chamberlain Street right of way makes a hard corner right here. There's an unimproved section in this location of about 400 feet, 410 linear feet. Um, so we will have to improve, fully improve, uh, uh, <coughs> build a new roadway along that 410 linear feet. There is about 2,200 feet from that point here on site for the extension of the Chamberlain Street uh, roadway. Again, terminates in an 80 foot diameter bulb. And in this case, <coughs> there is um, 20 lots uh, fronting on that extension, meeting the frontage requirement of uh, 200 feet. Similar question, how sure. long is the straightaway at Chamberlain? The that currently improved or? I'll have to get back to you on that. Okay. Again, it, it sort of goes off the page on my Logos map, so I can't yeah. give you an approximate length. So there's, there's an off-site component. There's essentially two components to the, the off-site improvements for Chamberlain Street. I mentioned the <coughs> section that's improved. Um, we are proposing about 880 linear feet of widening and improvement to that section of the roadway. And we can get into specifics about trees and stone walls and the scenic road. <coughs> uh, and then again, 410 feet from the corner to the site, and then the 2200 feet that I mentioned. So new roadway that we are proposing in total is just under 4,000 linear feet, including the 410 feet <coughs> on site and the two sections on site that I explained. Very important component of the plan is the connection to the two extensions. It's about just under 450 linear feet. It's an emergency access roadway. 20 feet in width is proposed, gated at each end. So solely for emergency access purposes. There is, as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> a stream that flows through here, so part of the construction of that emergency access entails a box culvert, which is roughly three feet in height by 15 feet in width. <coughs> we discussed briefly the open space. I just want to point out the open space. Again, it's about just under 45 acres total, uh, which is about 44% of the overall project site. Almost 30 acres of that open space is upland, so about 65% of that is upland area. And I'll try to approximate that on the plan. There's a strip along the east here that actually connects uh, to the roadway system that extends through the center of the site. There's a sizable area of open space along the western boundary, and of course, the portion that is zoned office park that we mentioned earlier. There are currently trails throughout the site, sort of an unorganized network of trails, I guess I would call it. Um, we did include an open space and trail plan in the plan set. That is, just for reference, that would be um, sheet 47. Yes, thank you, Kathy. So that shows you the existing trails, where we propose to abandon those trails where we propose to um, restore wetland areas that currently have trails that really serve no purpose. 
under the proposed plan, and then most importantly, where those trails will be relocated to link up and provide connectivity uh, throughout the site. And I can walk you through the trails in, in greater detail, but I realize, again, that's one of your agenda items. Yeah. Uh, quickly about utilities, um, water, there's currently a six inch dead end in Wayland Road. There's an eight inch dead end water uh, in this location at Chamberlain Street. We are proposing an eight inch connection all the way through the site, including across the emergency access to create a loop throughout the project site, which represents a vast improvement of the water system versus the dead end condition that you currently have. Sewer, we are talking about on-site sewage disposal and as part of the package that we submitted to the board, um, we included two part tests, deeps for each lot as required um, in the subdivision rules and regulations. There are two lots that we were unable to perk just because of a high groundwater condition. We fully expect that when things dry out a bit, those remaining lots will perk. And I believe the Board of Health indicated that they would uh, provide a memo to that effect. So essentially we have, but for those two lots, mm -hmm. which again we fully expect will perk, we have uh, testing that proves out uh, the lots. So we have a pretty um, wide range of percolation text, um, testing results. We're allowed to go up to 60 minutes per inch. We have some as low as three minutes per inch and others 54 minutes per inch. So what that equates to is we'll have septic systems that vary in size for the 32 homes on the plan. Can I ask a quick question about sure. the houses? Um, how many uh, of the lots encroach on the buffers on that side? Uh, the, the, Didn't you, the, the wetlands buffers, isn't that part of the, uh, the application is that you need a waiver on some of the buffers? All of our true? proposed structures and septics are outside all of those buffer zones, are outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. There was something I, I read that. Oh, with I'll, there's a, there's I'll, a 50 I'll go foot in. buffer zone where we, yep. we, can't, we can't disturb. Okay. Within 50 feet. And so we, don't, we aren't encroaching on that at all. Correct. With the okay. exception, of course, of the crossing areas here and here, which we The two about. wetlands crossings. Yes. 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 Correct. Okay. Thank you. For point of reference, I know we'll get more into it later, but what are the two, uh, through the chair, uh, what are the two properties that have trouble with the perk test? Uh, I believe it was lot 24 and 25. Oh, even though they're on more of the highland. Uh, lower one, I believe. The topography here is, it That's relates, it's it. fairly yeah. flat in this area, so it relates pretty closely to the wetland. Um, again, soils are good. We, yeah, we had, we had very wet conditions. So when we dug the perk holes, they just filled up with water. So you're just not able to, to perform the perk testing. We've, we've seen this before. So we just need to let it dry out a bit uh, in better conditions and go back out and test those two remaining lots. So to that point, to the chair, if I may. So what you're saying is that you took the time to, to do a perk test and it, and it failed. <coughs> no, no, it didn't fail. We didn't run the test. It's just, again, the, the ground was so saturated, surface runoff. Um, but isn't, isn't that part of a perk test anyway, is to make sure that the water levels stay within um, a certain... Right. Well, what we look for, there's, there's two components. There's the actual perk test, which in, again, in a dry condition, you, you test essentially the, the percolation rate of the soil. But I think what you're referring to more is the estimated seasonal high groundwater. Yes. And that is what we determine through deep test pits. We'll look at either observed or we'll um, look for signs of estimated seasonal high groundwater. And again, this is a, a wet surface condition that doesn't even allow you to dig a hole because it's essentially just collects surface water. So to that point, my question is, isn't that secondary to the first aspect of why you do a perk test in the first place? No, because what we're talking about is a surface water condition. It's just very wet. So what we look for is a, a groundwater condition. Surface and groundwater, two very different things. Mm -hmm. Again, we were just in a period of very wet weather over the, an extended period of time. So we'll get more detail on that. Yeah, you, yeah. again, the, the Board of Health agent was out there, um, fully expect that these okay. lots will perk. We just need to wait until things are dry. We could probably even do the testing now, but I would suggest that we wait a little longer. Okay, thank you. And we'll provide those mm -hmm. tests to you as well. Yep, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. The last item I had on my list was stormwater you'll see that there are a total of six stormwater basins shown in the blue color. 
and they are spread throughout the site, again, to respond to the <coughs> undulating topography that we have. This is actually a good situation. Rather than having very large detention basins, we're able to sort of break things up, keep them as small as possible, keep the side slopes uh, as gentle as possible. Uh, so the system as designed, the stormwater management system as designed, um, is in compliance with applicable stormwater management regulations. We did receive comments from Beta Group uh, on the stormwater. We've opened a dialogue with Beta and we're working through resolving those comments now. So that's a very high level overview of the project. Happy to answer. Mike, could you just point out, I just want to point out the two wetland crossings just oh, sure. to reiterate that. I know we had one with the emergency access. Right, so this one's the obvious one in the center of the site. Again, this mm -hmm. access road is about 445 feet in total length. A box culvert is proposed here to meet the stream crossing standards. There's another area right in here, very difficult to see on this plan, but there's a wetland crossing in this location that's very narrow. Um, we are proposing uh, two twin 24 inch culverts <coughs> and walls at that crossing. Thank you. Um, do any board members have any questions at this time? Not at this time. Okay. Um, then I think if we can, we could have Beta's overview. Thank you very much. For <coughs> uh, good evening, uh, Phil Paradis with Beta. We are your consultant, obviously, for this project. Um, so we we've uh, been on this project for uh, last year. Uh, we went through all the. Uh, discussions of uh, dead ends and 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 such, um, and so we we got a chance to review the um, plans. A lot of the a lot of the uh, comments that we have are just requesting more information or clarifications on on several items. Um, the things that pertain mostly to planning issues are the uh, request for waivers. You know, we get some. Pretty long dead end roads. Mm -hmm. um, I think I don't. I don't know. If you feel like you worked through that last time, but um, the the Chamberlain and the improvement sections, the existing Chamberlain um, and the 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 narrow right of way that bends down before you get to the actual subdivision uh, is going to require some improvements, and I think. Uh, there's there's a couple of challenges with that. The, the, the right of way is 25 feet wide. It's a varying width. Uh, varying width, um, and then on the on the Chamberlain end itself, which has got it varies from 14 feet to 20 something feet. Mm -hmm. So, I think from a safety standpoint, that that should be worked out. Uh, um, you know, come to a, uh, an agreement with the fire department and your, your safety people. On what what the width of the road should be, and also um, consideration of a sidewalk um, because of the schools down the end there, um, and so so those are the kind of the big items for that. Uh, all the lots have the right area, the right frontage, the uh, setbacks. Um, we did ask for kind of just a rough area for them to show us where the septics are going to be, so we can. Just give a, a clearer picture for the, the owners, make sure that they're not going to create a lot that they can't actually build on. Um, so, and then we get some details of, of walls, of other, other items too that we asked for. Um, and as we go through, um, we, we also have a number of stormwater issues. The, one of the biggest ones was the engineer has uh, kind of want to want to say tried to average the 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 soil conditions the soil conditions vary from from a to CD so as was indicated uh, that the, the percolation tests vary pretty significantly through the site so we we just want to be a little bit more accurate and and uh, do an analysis reflected of uh, based on the NRCS soils designations um, and, and, and such. Uh, also the rainfall data, um, uh, required rainfall data will have to be used and um, other than that I, I don't think there's uh, any issues that can't be uh, overcome 
<coughs> stormwater wise um, and such. So again, I think the biggest issues are the safety issues of the road mm -hmm. and um, how are you going to deal with those? How are you going to? And how are you going to deal with those? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, just a quick add on to that. And <coughs> I, I kind of want to be clear because Phil kind of mentioned that uh, maybe I misunderstood, but you kind of mentioned that you thought we would, had worked through the dead end issues. Um, and I kind of, you know, the way we had stated it at the end of the last one, I just want to be clear to everybody that that issue has not been resolved. It will be addressed during this meeting, correct? Correct. That we will have time to discuss that. Thank you. I have one question, yeah. Phil. You talked about the analysis on the stormwater. Is that analysis that Beta is going to do, or is that analysis that your engineers are going to do and provide the uh, output of that to you to redo? So uh, we've request, requested the engineer to do that, and uh, we'll review it, yeah, what they that. what they come up with. Sorry, Phil. Sorry, one more. Yeah, quick absolutely. While Phil's there. Um, I've noticed in some of the previous developments that they don't prefer the retention ponds, and here they've broken them up into a bunch of different small ones. Can you just give us some feedback on advice for whether we have those retention ponds? I guess because they're breeding down from mosquitoes. And have we heard that in the past with some of the other developments? We have heard that we, they don't like the open, the Board of Health doesn't like the open detention ponds. Which is what those would be, right, in blue? I'm, I'm guessing that's true. Right, um, and I, I, we understand the, uh, the concerns of, of mosquito habitat breeding. Uh, typically, all open space, open basin type designs are required to show that they drain within uh, 72 hours, okay. which is even the most aggressive uh, mosquito habitat takes at least four days under the right temperature conditions and to, to, to develop eggs. So if, if it drains within three days, it's considered safe. And these, these probably drain uh, within, a, within a day or two. It's, it's much less than that. Thanks. Yeah, I just want to make sure. I wasn't sure if you would be here when we had that discussion. So I figured, well, yeah, I mean, now. it's, it's for, for maintenance purposes and for uh, what they've done here, they've spread out the stormwater uh, systems, which is it's a much better way to, to kind of mimic uh, existing conditions. Um, so we would recommend uh, going with a typical design like this. So. Great, thanks. Anybody else? Okay. Right. <coughs> um, other town department comments. John <coughs> Westerling was here. Is he still here? He is. Ah. <laughs> Trying to hide in the back. No, no. Usually I see you over the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, John Westling, your director of public works. Just wanted to echo the comments that Beta provided. Also, have two other comments. Um, the first is with regard to the detention basins. The town would prefer to see those in the hands of uh, an association or someone other than the town. Those, those turn into a very large maintenance issue for the town and a very costly maintenance issue. Uh, so we would prefer to see that that go to an association or some other form. Uh, secondly, have great concerns with the design of the, uh, the emergency access road. Don't know what that will look like. Who's gonna be responsible for maintenance? Who's gonna ensure that that's closed? Who's gonna open it and close it during storms? Just those type of general things. Any questions for me? I do, sorry. Yeah, no. Um, <coughs> you mentioned the, the detention ponds being in a homeowner's kind of association, but I don't, do we have any examples of any other developments that have done that? Because I don't think there's really homeowner associations with housing developments. There are, uh, none that come to mind. Uh, Greenwood Road, that area. Okay, so we have something we can model up. Yeah. Okay, yes. great, thank you. You're welcome. Is this intended to be? Uh, thank you. I, I, thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> Is this intended to be an association? That, yeah. Right. So that's a different. That's a different question for us to contemplate. Okay. Thank you. So I have one question for John. So John, you talked about you know <laughs> concerns about the, the gated access. Uh, was that something that you want us to kind of flush out, or what specific? 
you mentioned some of the specific concerns. Is that something that you're expecting the applicant to be able to address as part of their presentation and review here to this group? Yes, I would hope that they could assure the town, the Department of Public Works, the Fire Department, and the Police Department that it will be maintained, that it will provide limited access as proposed and won't be left open or otherwise fall into disrepair where it is open and act as a throughway. Okay, perfect. And that is uh, that is on the agenda for specifically. Thank you, John. Terrific. This one, do we have any other John? examples? No, let's wait till he gets oh, all the way yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should just stay right there for a minute. Right. Amy, go ahead. Do we have any other examples of developments in town that have this emer gated emergency access already? Uh, there's one that comes to mind off of Oliver Lane. Uh, that is simply a chain at Reserve Street. And that's a little bit different in that it's a, when it reaches the, the public roadway on the other end, it's a common driveway that services two homes. So what we do typically during the winter, during a storm, we leave that gate open at the top at reserve or the chain, we leave that down just so that we can get through there with our vehicles. So uh, in effect, it becomes a, a through street, but that's different because it's, it's two driveways that lead to a dead end. So in the, excuse me, through, through yeah, yeah. Um, so what happens with snow that that might have struck the gate if it's open if it's piled up once that is open how do we stop anybody from connecting through the gate if it doesn't close my question exactly so yeah well, okay. it's definitely on the agenda to talk about in more detail I uh, appreciate you bringing it forward sure I think we're all interested in hearing how that's supposed to work okay Anybody else before John goes back to his seat? Yeah, just wait a second. It's great to see you, John. <laughs> Thank you very much. Treats look really good this winter. Thank you very much. Yeah, very good. I will job. pass that on. Thank you. Very good job. Um, uh, and then the Board of Health did not have any concerns, but we anticipated that the fire department would have some comments. Not at this time. Not at this time, not but, at this time. but you'll. Okay. Uh, any other town departments that we've heard from? Or any other department? Town departments here. Okay. So fire department two B. <coughs> okay. So now is the time that we ask um, planning board members and then the public to add to the existing outline. Um, so I'm going to ask the planning board members first if they have anything they want to add or highlight on the outline. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Chairwoman, I would like to always, I always like to add uh, solar energy as a option at least for discussion. <coughs> if we may. So. Where would we put that? Uh, how about utilities? Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. We can definitely add that in there. Anybody else on the board? I think the outline, Muriel, covers it pretty, pretty well. We, we've nailed the outline. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us go. <laughs> you know, you gotta, you got to take your wins where Start they come. The high point, right? <laughs> All right, and anybody in the public who would like to uh, discuss the outline or add to the outline? <clears throat> Okay. All right, we're gonna fly. Um, just doing a time check here. Okay, we got a half an hour to go. So a site walk, because we haven't walked that <laughs> site quite enough. But the upside, no poison ivy right now. Just ice and, yeah. Um, question? Yes. So we did have a site walk originally. Why would there be a need for another site We walk? had more than a site walk, yeah. actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> And Mr. Mastriani says, me too. Um, so uh, I am amenable to not necessarily having a site walk. Um, I would like to request, um, and I requested this before, um, the actual center line of the street marked for us um, and marked where we're going to, where the um, widened road will extend to, as well as where we're going to have the scenic discussion, the trees flagged. I do think we need to walk that piece again right. myself. Would, I, I, I agree. Like if we had the markings, that would be yeah. helpful. Yeah. Yeah. 
So is there, how long would it take you to get the markings up? The trees are marked, we would just mark the yeah. road, and I think we would try where we could to kind of flag the outline, you know, where we're expanding it. So uh -huh. I would say we could get that done in the next week. Okay. So um, <coughs> is anybody uh, up for a little so, winter So just to be clear, we're talking about the existing section of Chamberlain? <laughs> we're talking about Chamberlain. It, it will be the exist. if I understand it correctly, it will be the existing, and it, which includes the unimproved existing Correct. Chamberlain. So where we're proposing to start the improvements, which is just a little bit beyond the entrance for the center trail, heading toward Hayden Road. Yeah. We carry that all the way yep. down through the, the bend and into the unimproved section. Yeah. So you can see where that's yep. going. And um, I do have a question. I've been asking a lot of length of road questions, but uh, I'd also like to know what portion of Chamberlain that is designated as a scenic road that is being changed. Is it the entirety? Of the, I don't. I don't know if if Chamberlain is scenic in its entirety or not. It, it, the whole thing. Okay. I'm sorry. From Angelo. Just from Angelo. Okay, so from the audience, not at the microphone. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so we should just check that and see okay. from Angelo Road to know exactly what portion of Chamberlain is designated scenic, and how much, and of, how much of that is being okay. um, is being widened. And, and just to clarify, um, <coughs> Carol is a former planning board member. From, from your memory of this, it's from Angelo back away from Hayden Road as opposed to forward. Is that my recollection is it goes from Angelo to the end of Chamberlain. Could we have the name, please? Carol Dever, 47 Chamberlain Street. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so back to a date for the walk. Does anybody have um, dates that do or don't work in the next couple of weeks? I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm leaving on the 6th, and I won't be back until the 15th. Okay, um, I, I would, so the 15th is after our next meeting, so I would kind of like to get the site walk done, but the markings would stay up, Yes. right? So you'd be able to, on your own, go see it. Okay. Okay. Could you go February 3rd, Saturday? I can, I can do February 3rd. Depends on what time, because uh, February 3rd is um, Center School Reuse right. oh. Forum. Right, what time is the forum? At 10? Yeah. Well, let's do it at 9. In, is that is enough that time? 8.30? Uh, 8.30? 8.30? <laughs> 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 Does 8.30, can 8.30 work? I would rather start the day and have it done myself, but but that this doesn't work for you? This Frank has to set up for the forum. I don't know. I just, I just think there's so much stuff to do that day. When does the forum go then? 10 to? 10 to 12. 10 to All right, 12.30. Does that work for people? Yeah. Sure. Can we make, make it, it work? We'll make it Look at, oh, Fran, we'll I love the can-do attitude on this board. We should do it board. on Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, 12.30 on February 3rd for um, what will be a site walk but is intended to be um, Chamberlain Street widening <laughs> and uh, the scenic road demarcation so we understand which trees are involved. You said the trees are already marked? Yeah, we've marked the trees that we propose to take down. There's two on the improved section and uh, 19, 19. There's three on the improved section and two on 19 on the. So we should the meet at the end of Chamberlain where we did last time? Yes, yeah. that will okay. make the most sense. And then we can start at Center Trail and maybe work our yeah. way down. Okay, near, near, the, near the Center Trail. Start Just start start the center Trail? Trail. Okay. We'll meet us up now. Just a quick note, if I could. What we would likely do is put some stakes in the ground and mark those. Um, we'll just have to cross our fingers and hope we don't get snow because if this you know what I'm going to recommend snow is, is, is go ahead and put stakes in but put in some uh, driveway markers or flag right? flag flag so they stand yep. up if it yep. snows Orange or whatever flag. so we can see them on the trees you know just the little just so we can see it for sure okay I'm just hoping that they don't actually the roadway's so narrow that you know it's New England I, I yeah. wouldn't pray for no snow I I don't <laughs> think that's a I don't think that's a planning strategy frankly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It, it'll help everybody if we can actually see what we're talking about. Absolutely. Okay. 
All right. We are flying. We're at, at, at eight. So um, this is, we have 20 minutes just to, to mark the time. Um, if you're prepared to jump into the detailed discussion of the road and lot layout design and the emergency access. Mr. Westerling is still here. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's yeah. pretty that simple. Okay? Like, yeah. I gave you sort of the most important things, but okay. um, I can just give you a quick recap um, regarding the, the width. It's the, the roadways are uh, 22 feet, curb to curb. Bituminous curbing is proposed. Sidewalk on one side of the road. And the minimum center line radii, the horizontal and vertical alignment all meets your uh, subdivision rules and regulations. There was one comment that we received from Beta Group regarding a slight, um, I think we exceeded the maximum amount of fill of eight feet in a very small area. I think we can easily address that. I don't think there were any other comments that we received relative to the roadway alignments from Beta. The cul-de-sac, again, it's an 80-foot diameter uh, paved width. Uh, there's no center island proposed, no required as part of the uh, regulations. And everything I just said applies to both the Whalen Road extension as well as Changing Street. Again, about 1,300 linear feet here and about 2,200 linear feet uh, for the uh, southern access. The emergency road, a little bit more detail on that. Again, it's about 450 feet in length. The pavement width is 20 feet, which is minimally required for fire access. Uh, it would be gated at both ends, and we're happy to meet with emergency officials to discuss the design of the gates, um, automated operation, those types of things. I think we can easily come up with a solution uh, that everyone can, can be happy with. I mentioned earlier that there's a wetland crossing here. We have a three foot by 15 foot box culvert. The side slopes of this emergency access are graded at a two to one slope. We do have guardrails shown on both sides to keep cars safely on top of that emergency access. There are head walls proposed on each side. Again, these, these are detailed on the plans that we, we gave you. Um, there's specifically a plan and profile sheet that details the crossing. Um, I, I think it's that's straightforward. If I may. Unless there's more detail that you'd like me to get into. Just just for the record, can you show me where that area is of fill that you're looking at? Uh, I, I, ha I actually have not studied the plan to determine that one or two small areas where Beta mentioned. You, let me just put it into context. Your regulations um, require no more than eight feet of fill. <coughs> and we made a conscious effort to plan the roadway such that we wouldn't exceed that. And um, Phil mentioned that there may, may be one or two very, very small areas that exceed that. I haven't studied the plan to identify those yet. We'll bring them up as they come forward? We will certainly do that. Okay. And if there's a minor modification that we need to do to the vertical alignment, it's very easily done. What's a head wall? A head wall is typically, um, if you, sometimes you see them on the highway where a pipe comes out of the slope and there are concrete sort of wing walls or head walls that help to direct flow either in or out. Mr. Okay. Chair, where do, you have, where do you have the sidewalk starting on the Chamberlain side? The sidewalk, and, and this is part of the waiver list that we need to get into, but the sidewalk is, is essentially starting right here. And the reason for that is the roadway on site, we have a 50 foot wide right of way, certainly ample room to accommodate the sidewalk. We are not proposing the sidewalk on an unimproved section of Chamberlain because the, the, the right of way is so narrow. It's, it's just simply won't accommodate the sidewalk. I, 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 just, I do know that even right now, children can travel through a walk along Chamberlain and they can go over to Hopkins School from there. So I'm thinking they would be children that would live on this, in the subdivision, and would it be safe for them to walk? And, and Marathon School is across the street. Right. Coming, upcoming. Although I don't know how many kindergartners and first graders would be walking, but. But do you think Hopkins? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's something. How, how, much, how much are we talking about? The, is, it, is it 400 feet you said that is the unimproved? The unimproved section is 410 feet, correct. And so that would n is not proposed to have a sidewalk. Correct. Nor is the improved section where we're going to do some widening, which is 60 feet. Um, that has a varying width right away. But again, it's lined with stone walls and mature trees. So we're trying to sort of balance the widening yeah, needs be, with yeah. maintaining the character of the roadway. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. I, the sheets, I was 
going to suggest we bring up the sheets with the Chamberlain Road widening yeah, so that we can just talk through that. Sure. Just, just how quick thought before we switch gears. <laughs> I'll start a comment. Yeah. Um, we can so get to them. Can we see? Can we just finish with the sidewalk question? That's what. That's it. Oh, sorry. That's what I had a question related to that. Yep. But we're just going to finish with this one, and we'll go. Okay. Go ahead. I didn't know there was an open one. I'm on a yeah. previous one still. <laughs> okay. Hold that thought. Sidewalks. That's where my thought. That's where I thought we were. So. I so I just wanted a quick quick question about the sidewalks yeah. before we switch to the improved section about the new section. Um, I, I assume there'd be a, a green belt in between the sidewalk and the road, a two feet of grass or whatever. Yes, and it, it meets the cross sectional requirement of the okay. subdivision rules. Thank you. And just a quick follow up section. We were talking about the uh, the access to emergency access road. Uh, is there a possibility of having wooden guardrails instead of steel? steel steel anchors but wooden guardrails that we'd like to do that in some of our that, scenic, we've done that our scenic roads it's better to have the natural wood I do think I, thank you for being receptive but our, uh, our marathon school was not as receptive as you guys <laughs> I made that same suggestion and the town said no Good. <laughs> they were on their way and there was no stopping them. okay um, I think that we do have an open question though about sidewalks um, considering walkers and it's not just the Hopkins kids it's certainly the middle schoolers and the high schoolers too right, so um, I think we want to switch to that section of Chamberlain is that what you're yeah. thinking there? Okay. Uh, I still have to go ahead okay, okay. Uh -uh. so maybe you just don't uh, yeah I think so exactly. so we have an exhibit here but I'm not sure this is going to help this essentially is an inset so I'm just I think we want to start with this plan. So as, I, as I pointed out, we have a, an improved section of Chamberlain Street, and we have this 410 foot section. Just off the page here is where the road turns onto the site. Uh -huh. So now we're talking about uh -huh. full 50 foot width and, and brand new construction. Yep. So this section in here, uh, we have several mature trees, and again, very difficult to see uh, from your vantage point, but there are stone walls that line both sides yeah. of the right of way. Yeah. And of course, with a scenic road designation, stone walls and trees are a concern. Mm -hmm. So what we are proposing currently is a 20 foot pavement section. Uh, as a result, we do have some trees <coughs> to be removed, but no stone wall impact. Okay. And we'll see that also when we go out of there. We can have plans in hand so you can sort of imagine this a little bit uh, better in the field going there. I'd like to make a proposal, and unfortunately, we don't have any um, models to go off of in our town. Um, but I'd like to contact town council and see if there's a way with um, permission from landowners to get increase the right of way to put a sidewalk. Yeah, for us. Yeah. I, so I was kind of thinking in my head too. I, I don't. I don't necessarily. Yeah, I'm happy to ask those questions. Um, I was trying to think if, the, if there's a, a hybrid way of making a, a you know a trail that would be more in keeping with the scenic road that was also it, you know this like a gravel path ahead, even or something some like that. Some sort of so so that you could maintain the safe walking walking path. I, I would love to think outside the box and see if we can make a connection that that maintains pedestrian safety, particularly because we we have that access to the school. Um, it just makes sense. And actually, I'd, I'd like to propose that in both sections of the entire length of Chamberlain and Whalen. Right? I mean. Oh, yeah. No. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I'm just trying to be mindful of the time. Um, Frank, you had a question? Did, did you, I'm, just, I'm, I'm sorry, did David get an answer? Or? Yeah, I think it's, we're, it's a work in progress, but yeah. okay. people understand my suggestion. Thank you. Um, <coughs> If you, if you go back to the over, overview of the sure. whole project, I, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again, it feels very much like it's, it's a way of you know, you're saying one thing, but it's, it's another thing. It's still an extension of two dead ends and safety road or not. And um, I'm against any plan that, that looks like this. And I appreciate that the road safety is in there with the turns and the houses are uh, outside of wetlands and, and it's very well planned otherwise. Um, but the way it's presented now, it, it's, it's 
for me, it's non-starter still. It's the second time around. So. Before before they answer that question, if you're looking for an answer, I just wanted to build off of that because um, I thought I was going to be the only one to say that on this board, but uh, I will not support any dead any cul-de-sacs for this mm -hmm. project. That's just my thing. So I, I don't know if that's something we want to discuss early on before we go into all the details, but if it's just Frank and I, I, I think. It's I mean, I think. What we have is we have the neighbors represented, we have the developer represented, and what represents the town is our zoning. And we're looking at <coughs> changing that zoning, overriding it. And I just don't feel comfortable with that. I, I think the zoning is set up properly. I think this is kind of, it makes everybody happy, but it's hokey. It's not how you would design a town road. Okay, so I think that it makes a great deal of sense. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll have two more board members that catch up on this hearing. I think it makes a great deal of sense to have a fuller conversation about that before we go too far um, down the path. Um, I also want to acknowledge that um, we didn't fully discuss the emergency access and maintenance and how that's going to function. Um, so we'll definitely uh, want to do that. We do have um, 10 more minutes, nine more minutes. Can I just ask if there's anybody here um, from you know, abutters or concerned neighbors that would like to make some comments before we continue this. Right. Yes, I would like to. <coughs> Please just state your name and your address. Sure. Isabel Hart, Chamberlain Street. Um, I just want to comment on the, the sidewalk question and the safety question. Um, practically speaking, Chamberlain Street is about a mile long, and if you add that other subdivision, I'm not sure what limit you expect the center school, or the, not center school, but the uh, middle school students to walk, so I think you should just consider that, that whether or not really the kids are going to be walking almost two miles, unless there's a, a cut through. The school, actually. Yeah, so if, if that's a mile, then it's probably another mile if you loop back in unless you cut through people's yards that's a significant way um, i also just want to impress on you the um the safety issue because um i commend you for thinking of the safety of the neighborhood and how the roads are designed and such but quite frankly if it becomes a cut through it's going to be a far more dangerous situation for all the people living on along that street and sometimes we do have to think outside the box to also ensure that we have two neighborhoods that are not degraded because they become a cut through for traffic from West Main Street in 85. And I think that's a significant consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else want to have any comments at this time? Uh, my name is Chuck Daugherty, 25 Sanctuary Lane. Um, uh, Speaking from the perspective of a retired uh, wetlands and stormwater consultant, I would like to endorse the review uh, of your consultant, uh, particularly regarding some aspects of the stormwater. I had an opportunity to go through uh, the plans at the Conservation Commission office this afternoon. It's a very short time to review that pile <laughs> um, and a small scale plan, but I did notice several of the points uh, that uh, Beta did, uh, and I hope those can be addressed in, in the final analysis. Um, from the point of view of uh, a neighbor, uh, I know a concern of uh, m much of the neighborhood is the potential uh, for through traffic. Uh, certainly, the proposal for a gated emergency access, however the management of that is worked out, uh, is uh, a big plus. Um, however, <coughs> um, there I know is some concern that even the 20 feet is unnecessarily wide and might potentially allow for some expansion in the future. Um, I suggest that the Planning Board also consider and the Conservation Commission through the recommended analysis of alternatives um, uh, look at narrowing that access. Um, a common driveway uh, 
for emergency passing areas, 18 feet. Common driveway, normally 12 feet. Uh, we have access from both sides and a looped water main. So from the fire protection point of view, uh, I think a narrower roadway than 20 feet could still provide complete protection. Um, it would also significantly reduce the extent of <coughs> wetland alteration and more easily comply with uh, wetlands performance standards. Um, it is certainly possible to squeeze down for the stream crossing at the wetland area, open up a little wider. Um, the other element that uh, is of concern is the uh, right-of-way that's currently shown uh, through the open space is 50 feet. That would certainly allow in the future for expansion to a full town road. I recommend that the planning board consider narrowing that right of way uh, to uh, just whatever minimal construction width is required uh, and probably less with a construction easement. And that the open space be placed under a conservation restriction with an independent nonprofit uh, conservation organization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, good evening, Don Caveney, 14 Whalen Road. I just arrived, so I apologize if. Um, I missed, I missed a lot of what was going on earlier. You missed everything, we're almost there. I know, but I'll be, so I'll be quick. I will say this, that um, speaking on, I, on my own sole behalf, I'm a member of that coalition of Chamberlain and, and Whalen Road. Um, you know, we've worked with Mr. Mastriani and, and appreciated everything he's done with this plan, and he certainly has um, taken our concerns into consideration. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, again, at the outset, we, we certainly didn't want a development there, mm -hmm. but uh, he's been very um, uh, accommodating. No, not acc I wouldn't say accommodating, but he li he listened, and he certainly he he, re he tweaked the plan to reflect the concerns that the that the neighborhood had or neighborhoods have. Um, so I, I do just want to get that on the record. And with respect to the um, decisions seem to be already be made by two members here. You know, it, it, zoning there are there are special permits, there are variances, there are always exceptions to zoning, and the plan here is not only consistent. With, with zoning, but it's also consistent with the master plan for the town. It preserves trails, and, it, and it, he's putting in, um, willing to spend money to connect trails that he wouldn't normally have to do. So again, I think it, it, it takes a, a situation that could have been really bad. He listened to what people had to say, and he came up with a plan that personally, I'm, you know, again, I'm, I'm willing to support because he's, he's gone above and beyond. and again, willing to spend some money to connect some trails and keep a lot of open space that he would not have to do. So I would respect, I would ask that the two members who seem to have already made a decision to hold off on making a decision to all of, to the, to the public hearing has been closed, um, and, and to listen to all the concerns um, of, of the two neighborhoods, as well as other town officials and, and Mr. Mastriani. Thank you. Uh, I would tend to agree with you too, sir. So I appreciate that comment. Thanks. I think, hold on, if I might just yeah. make one comment. It, it's okay. kind of a, a dilemma. So, so um, I'm going to encourage us not to go back and forth. Okay. We'll have the full conversation, but. I, I just want to make one yeah. comment yeah. of why yeah. um, I said it. I don't know why Frank said it. But we've been studying this for a long time. It's not something that we just came to a decision on. We've, we've thought this, I shouldn't say we, I have thought this through thoroughly and thought about it a lot. Um, so the. Even though you phrase it as we've already made up our decision, there is value to having an upfront discussion instead of dragging through the whole process and take waste everybody's time and then just saying, hey, we're against it. So that's not what we're trying to do. We're very open minded, and I just want to make that comment. Okay, I see two hands, just so you know. Cliff was first. So to, to that point, and extending on beyond that, is that um, the bylaws are, are our determining factors of, of what we do as a board, not not the, you know, we, we take into consideration the neighbors and everything else, but our bylaws are, are, are governing aspect of our, of our town. Sure. And, and so when we reflect back into <coughs> what we base our decision on, there are already caveats that say, wait, 
hold on a minute because it goes against some of our zoning. So that's the only reason I think, and I'm not saying for anyone that that was brought up in the interim of, of discussion. And, and if I may just briefly, Rasan, my only concern was I, I'm hearing that decisions have been made and the public hearing hasn't been closed. So that to me, I guess a little, I'm a little bit concerned about that. Absolutely. I'm certainly fine to have concerns. You want to raise concerns and have dialogue about it. That's great. But when we're at the first <laughs> day of our hearing and two members are saying, I've already made a decision as a non-starter, that to me isn't having dialogue. That's I've made my decision and I'm not going to go any further. So okay. that's Thank my concern. You. Thank I you. I appreciate that. Yep. Thank you, Cliff. Yes. Thank you. Mine will just be very brief. Um, this is project chair, Ms. project chair. It's really around being open-minded. There is more information that's going to come out through the site walk, through more detailed discussion here. So I am one of the ones that have not made a decision, so I'm very open. Um, you know, although, and I'll reach out to my other board members <coughs> on this, if you've made or if you've come to some conclusion, is there an alternative that you're looking at or this is just this issue, this option is a non-starter? And, and what I would suggest but is not discussing that we're, now. We're okay. Right. Yep. Okay. Correct. We're at 831 yep. just to say. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I think it'll come out in our further discussion. As, as kind of chair one comment. Absolutely. Chair is one. that <laughs> we should all have the reason for a public hearing is to consider everything. Right. And we shouldn't make a decision based on one point without hearing everything. So I asked the two members who stated that they've already made a decision on that point. So let me that, back well, up. No, no, let me. The, let I think you're saying I didn't no, make I a decision on that point. Yes. No, but I didn't so, make a decision no, on that point. I, I put no, words in my but mouth. On that, on that point. So look at, we all have to look at everything across the board <clears throat> and then make a decision on the project based on everything that comes out of the public hearing and not just on one point. If after you hear everything, that point is still an important point, yes. But I think in all fairness to the people here and to the applicant that I think we go into it as, as open-minded, listening to everything. We all have our preferences in leaning one way or the other, same way the crowd, same way the applicant. But I, I think to increase the flow of information and discussion. I think when we have a specific kind of at the end point is we discuss everything and at that point if it's still part of your consideration, absolutely. Yeah, I, I just emphasize, um, and we are we are out of time, we're gonna take a vote on continuing. I'm gonna emphasize that, you know, we all have our, um, you know, our our opinions and our and the things that, that drive us here, but um, we are called by, uh, the community to yeah. contemplate the whole um, presentation and the whole uh, package. But I understand everybody has their convictions as well. So there's somewhere in there, there's always going to be natural, n natural tension. This is the point in the, <coughs> the agenda where we are. It makes sense for us to talk about this at the beginning of the continuation is the road design and the waivers and where, you know, how we would approach them if we can approach them. Um, so I would enter, t where, when do we have a spot that we could continue this to? February 12th. Uh, what time? Um, we have the Saddle Hill Stormwater Management Permit discussion starting at 7.30. Um, so 8.35. Yeah. And then or set 8? 7.30, half an hour for the stormwater. Yeah, we have oh, 45 minutes. Okay. Okay. All right, so 8. 8 o'clock? I'll have a motion for, a, uh, entertain a motion for February 12th at 8 o'clock to continue the hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> We're, We're going to take, take a five minute break. Thank you guys.
hearing, Whisper Ridge, open space, landscape preservation. Amy, what page? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and no kidding, for those right? who aren't here, here. Our, our, our package this week is close to a thousand pages. All right, 950. So uh, the request. <laughs> Amy is very good at delineating what page the project start on. So I will turn this over to the project liaison, Mr. Durso. <coughs> Thank you. So from where we took off from before, um, there was a, to be a Conservation Commission up. filing. Has there been an update on that? We're, we're in ConCom tonight. Okay, so it's concurrent to this. Yeah. So that means it's an open question. Uh, they're reviewing wetland impacts, resource area impacts. Um, so item B, zoning compliance, open space, um, bylaw. Okay. How was that working? Do we? Is that something you would discuss before? We kind of covered it that uh, they had presented um, two plans, and then we looked at what could be workable, what could not be workable, uh, and, then, um, and then we decided to, well, preference was consensus was to go for the road layout as it's as they're presented just right here. Um, I haven't looked at what it's passed out, this is what's in the packet. And then in the, and then that end of the discussion, uh, we were covering um, how they, what things are in compliance, and Phil had made some comments, uh, and we were going to come back to that uh, discussion point, and then, um, as you see, we have, you have checked off, I'm sorry, you need this. Uh, I have uh, Okay. Uh, conventional plan feasibility, uh, to discuss how many lots can be, could be built on, um, and we never voted, is that true? Uh, we hadn't voted on the number of lots, so that discussion is still open. Um, no, I thought we were. We, 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 we did vote on that. I think having a checked off means one and two are both checked off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I'm sorry, because we forwarded this a couple of meetings ago, so. Uh, There's a vote in the minutes. Okay. So. Is this now the concept plan we're talking in B, or are we going on to, yes, item 8C, number B. Is that correct? Does that match everyone's memories on this? Yes, sir. <coughs> so would you like to present and explain what you just handed out to us? <coughs> as if, uh, and if there's any changes or anything we should be notified of that are different from our last discussion, yeah. from feedback from our last discussion, I should say. I just want to say out loud, I appreciate whoever colored these in. <laughs> <laughs> They're hand colored. That was Jim. I'm, <laughs> just, I'm just saying that, you know, it's the little things that help help, help people out. It's above and beyond. For the record, George Miko, Gary Ren Talman, uh, Whisper Ridge Subdivision, Open Space Subdivision, we already uh, met about it, so just brief overview. It's a 47.2 acre subdivision, 24 units, um, common septic system, and currently this one house over here, two houses over here, and one house over here. The one uh, close to Wood Street will be demolished. Those two also will be replaced. This one will remain. Um, <coughs> we will have 3,500 feet of 20 foot wide road. And uh, altogether, we will have 25 uh, acres of open space. Uh, what changed since last time we met? Uh, you requested us to. Uh, do a more detailed, to take a more detailed look on the wetlands, which we did. A wetland scientist delineated the wetlands, and a survey crew uh, went on site, picked the new flags, 
So what you see in front of you on the handouts and here on the board would be the new wetlands. Uh, there is no major differences with the old ones, which uh, the previous ones were delineated in 2003, but we had a wetland scientist on site who verified them. We just didn't have time to put them on paper for the previous meeting. Now with it, no substantial difference. <coughs> And uh, another major difference, uh, I guess, would be um, the independent reviewer requested a better uh, delineation of the areas that are steeper than 25%, which we did. I don't know whether it's visible on the handout, but those would be those areas that are hatched and they are spread throughout the subdivision. Um, the road, uh, as defined by the, the bylaws, the road should not go through those steep areas for extended length, uh, which made us redesign the, the layout of the road. Uh, specifically in this area here, the road used to pass through the steep areas. Now it follows the existing uh, dirt road in the in the woods, and uh, it became slightly longer because of this loop that we did. But the other major difference would be that we uh, ended up passing through the uh, 100 foot buffer, which brings us to the to our request for uh, a waiver, so we can go with the road through the 100 foot buffer. On one property? Can you point that out? This area here, this right. would be around 250 feet. Oh, the road itself or the, or the property? The road, Just the road. The road itself. <coughs> right. We took care of the properties themselves, like the, this no vertical uh, obstructions in the, in the buffer, so to say. Um, so you can the see houses are farther than 100 feet from the property line. So you can see clearly the going around that bend straight ahead without any uh, obstruction? Yes, correct. Yes. And according to this, the steepest part is the part that's already there, but that also needs to be looked into, I guess, the initial part coming off of Wood Street yeah. and initial incline uh, or decline, top, depending which way you're going. Uh, that was going to be looked at as well. Yes, we looked at it, and it is uh, we do maintain slope smaller than nine percent or at nine percent. Even though it's in the, the grade area, uh, showing it's the, the grade. The current entrance. Further up. Yes, current entrance. Further up. Towards towards the Wood Street. Top of the street. top of the track. Right up there. Over yeah. here. Uh, well, I can show you the profile. Uh, Excellent. Which so, yeah, currently we have. Uh, if I may ask you, what's the grade that you're saying that we're at now? 9% is what we maintain. Uh, we have currently this dip where we will have to uh, raise the road a bit, yes. Is it 9% or 8%? <coughs> <coughs> so that's a very condensed chart you're showing. Um, yeah. Can you explain it though? I mean, is that, is that just the entrance for <coughs> Yes, this, this is Wood Street, yep. and this is the entrance, which is currently whispered. Yes, yeah. and as you know, it's pretty steep. Yep. Deep yep. down, and then you come up. But what? What's the rest of it? Then the downslope from the right. Keep going. Nine percent. We no, no, keep going. Nine percent. Uh, then two point six percent. No, no, but we are sorry. So that slope going down are towards you. Are we still? We're on this layout. Are we still up over here? It's not the road, right? It's not following the road, is what it's. No, this is following the road. Oh, it is. Yeah. So. It's following it as if it were a straight line. I got you. So okay. this side over here is up here. Yeah. 
and then the peak is if it's halfway, yeah. it's probably yeah. okay. Yeah. So that's the yeah. other part that's coming back out. Okay, that's thank you. That, that, that chart thank itself you. is kind of condensed because it's not correct. Yeah. So the the way we do profiles is the scales are different vertically and horizontally. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to fit everything. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, this looks a lot steeper than it really is because there's different scale one way than the other. Okay. We all walked this. Yeah. Right. You know, right. And we and we stairs. made it. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> so, so your intention, your intention is to do a, um, a, an amount of fill. I see on your linear, linear line there that that is that in the lower corner of the beginning off of Wood Street, which is whisked away. Yeah. Is that that's where you intend to fill that in a little bit? Yes. Yeah. Just to create. Because that that dip is now at what ten percent or to, to re the create more volume to reduce the, the dip, steepness of it. Yes, yeah. this is the idea to to make the the curve to make a hundred foot curve so it's a com uh, comfortable. Would there ride. be a culvert involved in that? Uh, yes, we'll have to to run a culvert underneath. I see. And so that's that's in front of. This Congress. would be a conservation commission issue. Yeah. So Elaine, what is the steepest that uh, acceptable? Nine percent. Nine percent is the maximum. Yes. And they're aiming for eight. All right. Well, no. we. No, I, I thought it was. I thought it was eight, but it's nine. It's, it's nine percent. Here's where the the existing alignment ends. At, in this point, so you, as you can see, we are pretty much keeping the same slope. We're just trying to make it a more comfortable ride. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions from the audience on this portion? Right. I just um, had a general question. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't well, I Thank you, Project Chair. Uh, some of the houses, some of the lots have some pretty steep terrain on them as well. I'm thinking specifically, if I read my topography maps correctly, lot 17 uh, and even uh, 16. Uh, is there any impact to those lots uh, when it comes to um, drainage runoff because of the such a steep slope and some of the proposed houses look like they're <coughs> proposed to be right near the bottom or, or some of that steepness comes into play? Or am I trying to well, we're still working on the on the main layout of the the road. Um, the actual houses you're talking about. Uh, 16 and 17, yeah. they, are, they are not set in stone. I mean, they, they can move around and Just be set up. I mean, I, you know, I'm just, different manner. right, it doesn't impact the roadway per se because you're right. within that 9% gradient range or limit. But I just, you know, from a housing perspective. Just, just to build on that a little bit, if I may, um, I, I guess I would ask the developer, I think there's some certain things you can do, like you can do double foundations and that kind of stuff. I mean, is there something? Even, even going with a smaller house on that particular lot, yeah. if when we start to grade out the lot. Only for the, sorry, we're <laughs> watching at home, yeah. So yeah, these are, you know, they're all the same house, more or less, going through here, and they're just preliminary so that we can get an idea that they are buildable, that a house will fit, but certainly, um, if it doesn't make sense in, uh, from, from a uh, saleability standpoint, right. even, yeah. um, then you know, like a smaller house or uh, you know, longer, skinnier house. You know, there's there's plenty of things that we can do um, to to make it more manageable. And this is also again one of the reasons that the um, community septic system really works out because it gives us more room on the lot to put the house. Put the house. That's fair. Okay. Thank you. Can I come back? Okay, please. Um, so. If that were the case and you went to a smaller house, the road could then be moved back a little bit and give you the buffer that you might be looking for? Uh, nope, the reason the, the road is where it is is because of, um, because we're trying to, basically the only area where we can get across, the, you can see the 25% slope kind of runs. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. It, but it runs up and down the plan. So that the that's the least point. The existing uh, cart path is really the only place where it's less than uh, the 25%. So um, 
from the, from a meeting the regulation standpoint, that's the the best place for us to, to go through. And with regard to the buffer, you know, the 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 major uh, reason for having the buffer is to kind of screen uh, a, a development like this from surrounding properties. But this is abutting the town forest, so it's not there's you know it's not as crucial. Um, and where we're asking for a waiver for you know that small 200 foot section, we're also giving you all this open space over here. So we feel like it's a pretty good trade-off. Trade -off. And previously they had been another crossing, and so it's right. Right. So I just wanted to make that very clear that the, the topographical grade is the least point of resistance. Correct. So that being said, that's why you're looking for that. Correct. I like that it's based on the cart path, and I don't like the buffer being so near the town forest, but there's trade-offs. Um, Phil, do you have comments on the, on this concept? Um, <coughs> just again, for the record, Phil Paradis with Beta. Um, the, uh, so they provided us some profiles. Uh, it, it, it is going to be a challenging site to develop each lot. Um, you know, but I don't think it's un, uh, it's undoable. Um, just want to make a correction about um, what they did submit to the conservation. They su they submitted what's called an ANRAD uh, to delineate the wetlands, not to talk about the impacts of, of development in this project. That will that will be another uh, once they've got a, a fairly well engineered plan, they'll go back before the conservation and file a notice of intent um, but a lot of the work that they're proposing is is out, outside of the buffer zone so um. so for clarification for the home audience the um, anarad is abbreviated nation yeah. this is what we have there as far as wetlands and this is the slopes and this is what it looks like uh, it doesn't necessarily cover the crossing uh, the road itself, I should say. Uh, not, we don't have a crossing anymore, but uh, other than the initial one from Wood Street. The, does that get covered in the NRAD or is that further down the line in the process? So, right, the, the, the NRAD only deals with delineation, uh, kind of more memorializing where the wetland le delineation is so that when they go to design it, they, they know what their impacts are, they know where to stay out of, uh, out of things. When it, when it comes back to doing the the actual design plan, they will go to the conservation commission and say these are the impacts. This is how we're mitigating it. Um, and this is this is you know we're asking for X Y Z. You know, just like a waiver for the road here in the buffer zone, they may need some sort of relief and mitigation for wetland filling. And how does a conservation commission get notified that we've considered? alternate plans and we decided to, to concentrate on this one so they, they can file feedback or your feedback or yeah I mean we will have the discussion they can also file you know uh, alternatives analysis and see let them know what what they've already been through which will, will help things so, out so when they move forward with a notice of intent uh, I guess maybe it's more of a question for Elaine from, from our perspective um, Do we need to get feedback from CONCOM before we move forward, or is it in conjunction with CONCOM? May I uh, uh, mention something? I will submit the exactly the same uh, drawings and paperwork to you and to, uh, to right. planning board and to CONCOM, so you will be looking at the same final design. Right. And then you can... It's just that they're, right now they're behind us, and then our, by our next meeting we'll have feedback. So what it is is that so basically we'll be going with conservation for the notice of intent simultaneously concurrently with uh, with you guys in the definitive process. Right. So just like we're you know it's a somewhat preliminary process to get the um, to get the delineation down right now um, while we're finishing a preliminary with you once we know that. You guys are good with the general concept and 
they are good with where the delineation is, then we can move forward with finalizing the plans. And, uh, and usually we try to keep both open concurrently till we get all of everything flushed out because we want you both to, you both need to vote on the same plan. So, um, because if one of you closes and then we have changes from the other, we have to come back. Tonight's the first time they're seeing this though. And so Correct. that's what I mean, we're a little bit ahead and then they'll catch up, we'll get feedback. I still like when we meet at the same time. And <laughs> uh, Elaine, so that meshes well with. Right, so this is a conceptual plan. And so it's properly before CONCOM as a conceptual plan as well. And they'll make their decision when you're making yours at the final, at the definitive stage. Any other questions? Conceptual plan, size, road, layout? Can I just confirm there's just two wetlands project? Wetlands project. There are two wetlands. Can I point those out? One of them would be um, where the road, the existing road goes in, uh, and the reason we have the wetland crossing is because we have to widen a bit the road. Mm -hmm. uh, the other crossing would be in this area where there's also an existing path through the wetlands, but this is something we definitely have to discuss with Concord. The Wood Street one is pre-existing and used and will be an improvement. The, the other one is uh, a cart path not general yeah, use. It's even yeah. Stepping stones. Stepping stones. <laughs> <laughs> minor compared to the other crossing that you're not doing. Correct. It's very scenic as it as it is today. Yes. Uh, any other comments from the planning board? No, I just uh, I appreciate the um, the confirmation on the wetlands delineation. I know that we didn't expect it to be different, um, but I do appreciate that you know at this stage we we have that. Alrighty, so traffic. Is there a traffic study? Uh, so typically we wouldn't do a traffic study in a preliminary, especially where this is um, off of a you know pretty main road. Um, I wouldn't anticipate that it's even something you guys would necessarily expect from us in, in the um, definitive stage, but this is certainly when if you if this is something you want, that's this would be the time to tell us so that we can make sure we're submitting it. It would be interesting because there are two entrances onto Wood Street, um, which makes it a little bit better than one, uh, a lot better than one. Uh, just uh, anticipated issues that could come up because of uh, a busy street and a, a now more populated side street. <coughs> um, Elaine, uh, previously we were discussing the different layouts and uh, fire and, and the planning board consider this uh, the safer way to go. Um, but generally, what do we need as well at this stage of the process? If you have concerns about line of sight on Wood Street, and have they done a study of the, the site? I was just going to say, it's pretty good line of sight there, isn't it? But it would be interesting to know, you know, exactly what the line of sight is. I'm, I'm pretty certain that, um, I'm pretty certain we took a look at that already. What's um, the distance between the, the two streets? Uh, not very far. I mean, we trotted along at say. We did, but I'm just trying to. Yeah. I think the minimum is like 150. Yeah. No, between you're talking about our entrance, our two entrances. Two entrances. Well, two entrances. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> uh, the would be around 480. 480. Yep. Okay. I do have comments mm. for the project chair. Um, I am interested, <coughs> excuse me, I am interested in the line of sight to the existing entrance on Whispering Way today. Because if you're heading east on 135, you actually come around, my observation, if I remember is correct, you actually come around a bend and then you're there. So that would be the one, if you got more traffic now, because it's, you know, what, there's two or three houses. But now if you could increase that number of cars potentially coming out, that bend is, you can come around there pretty quick. It's nothing like Winter Street, though. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a Patriot's Way across from it, too. Yeah, is Patriot's Way right across from it? It's right across from the second. Yeah, they've aligned their intersection with that. Okay. Right. Okay. Which is generally safer, right? So the Correct. Okay. And I think that's the point I wanted to point out was the alignment. So you do want Patriot's. We can confirm it, but we did look at the line of sight 
different. I, I'm, I know it was something that we looked at um, to make sure it met the, the requirements based on the scheme. So, so in that, uh, Chair, um, in that Whisper Way area, and I'm, I ride it every day on a bicycle, so I know um, you come up either from west going east, and just as you come around that bend, it is it is quite it's right there, it's in your face, and that site of traffic on Wood Street is just everybody's moving. Yes. So that's I think that's fit. So. Yeah. We can confirm it. Okay. Thanks. That's not a. That's yeah. So just to be specific, we're asking for a line of sight from review. On coming east on Wood Street. Just a measurement and a confirmation. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to Fran's point, possible need for traffic calming measures, item D. I honestly think the site is going to provide traffic calming uh, measures. <laughs> 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 if people are sensible. Uh, and I just, I just think it's a site that's given to, you know, nobody's, not racing, right? Right. It's, it's yeah. a what follows the terrain. It's a it's a windy, you know, hilly road, hilly. Um, yeah, certainly not. Doesn't lend itself to. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Palm Street. Yeah, but in this case, you know, it's all your own neighborhood. You know, too. It's not. It, it's nobody coming through a neighborhood and not being aware of who lives there. Yeah, there the live. kids. Yeah, become yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. very much like Hunter's Ridge, which is a previous project. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very similar. Good um, I did have a really sure. possible thing I could consider. Like, a, on the, the, you're going to improve the original first entrance, and it'll be a fairly steep downhill to the road. So just going to make sure people aren't going really fast, and then pull out to Wood Street. So, right. <laughs> 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 That's the only traffic coming I can think of. Leaving their house in a hurry, <laughs> slipping down the hill. But. Yeah, there'll be a leveling area. There'll be a leveling area so they can right. slow down. And that's where the fill would come in as well. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, offsite improvements, Whisper Way. Impacts to abutters from any road widening. Uh, well, really, the abutters that are there, uh, three out of the four houses are being removed. Um, Is anybody staying? Just yes. the one house at the top of the hill. from top of the hill. And, uh, well, he's actually not going to be staying. But <laughs> the house is. <laughs> the the house is. Yeah, the but house. it's, it's going to be all brand new neighbors, right? Eventually, yeah. 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 Should, we have, should we ask their abutters if they're here? Uh, are there abutters here? Uh, Dan McIntyre uh, called me this afternoon and said he wouldn't be here, but wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> he's up going up on the hill. Yeah. Now, that there are properties to the left and right. Yeah. It's uh, Donna McIntyre is across the street. She's the one that's selling the land. Um, she's in the first uh, existing house on the left. And then she owns the other house, the second one on the left. And um, she plans to. Uh, and those she being removed. Currently removed. renting it, and she'll just. I'll be renting it at some point. <laughs> I hope that's good news to somebody. And the, and the other house that's <coughs> up here goes away. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And then uh, this lot of land that's not included off of Wood Street, that's a different oh, owner. Oh, uh, a little triangle? A uh, rectangle. Oh, uh, I was just talking about the one. By the current entrance. The triangle we know is like the leftover from oh, down oh, here. 495. Yeah. It's, it's, it's somebody's this, somebody's it, house a lot. They're not, we're not changing anything in that because it's all, that's Basically actually the vernal pool. Yeah. So we're definitely not touching anything along that's that That's a historical lot, lot that Yep. If anything, it's an improvement. So, uh, and then there's one more lot to the west. That house, I think, is a rented house, the yellow house. Correct. Uh, Which one is that? It's, it's not shown on the plan. Right. Yes. Um, the the existing for way is actually closer to that. It actually doesn't fall in the layout. Correct. Yeah, correct. that's that's a built with house. I yeah, you know what? Who lived yeah. on Wood Street? Yeah. 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 South Tire. So we're actually moving. Wood, wood, wood. The, yeah. the street's actually outside the layout, mm -hmm. um, so we're sliding it back into the layout and moving it away from that house. So, if anything, it's an improvement. Thank you. Oh, sidewalks um, along the proper, along the new street, and uh, possibly along Wood Street. Yes, how about it? 
I mean, that's an interesting concept. <laughs> Picking up the two entrances. I don't know, is that possible? That's something we always like to do. Um, I mean, part of the roadway is uh, um, available, if you will, um, if the red line is the property line, um, to have some sort of uh, sidewalk added. So they might not be able to do it that lot that they don't own. I mean, not de yeah, definitely not that one. But uh, but on the edge of there the, to. But I don't think I don't think many people are walking that that part of that area. Well, I think. I think, I think they would. Well, they they want to walk around the neighborhood. I, I would say that, right, typically in that area, excuse me, sure. chair. No, typically I would not look at to have a, a, a sidewalk there on, on Wood Street, but I think to your comment, just to create that loop, if you want to walk a loop, mm -hmm. be a nice, I'll make it up a mile or a mile and a half loop and feel yeah. fairly safe of yep. doing that. that it's, a good, it's a good. I do, I do yeah. think, though, just to say, uh, as somebody who has trained to walk the Susan G. Kelman, there are a lot of people who actually do walk along there and it is a spot that um, would be improved with a sidewalk and you know in the overall um, interest I don't is there a sidewalk on the other side though no there's no, no, sidewalk. no, there's no, there's no sidewalk sidewalks at all, at all. no um, actually that would be on the same side where the current sidewalk is going by the TPW yeah yes yeah so through you sure through, sorry friend. um is it what's your thoughts on putting a, a sidewalk there Ron no, that's I don't have a problem with that. It's fine. I think it's a good idea. Excellent. Thank you. That's a good idea. Where do you put that in there? I could put that in there. Was well, that you? Are you talking? No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't ring a bell. It doesn't, no, it doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> He's our sidewalk guy. It's a tradition that Ken would bring up, and I like, yeah, I like it. follow through on that. Um, pedestrian and bicycle safety, I think. Uh, uh, well, pedestrian safety, we just kind of covered a little bit. We made hopefully make improvements that make it a loop of bicycle safety um, are there anything that we could should keep in mind uh, is um, mrs. Moran would you have a, a, a opinion on uh, trail connectivity for people walking from Wood Street up to the trail uh, trailhead uh, was there any safety features that you might want us to consider well actually I was I'm going to speak to something further down open space um, trails. Jane, um, you have to be at the mic. Thank you. While she's coming up, wasn't there a trail, a parking lot for the trail? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Could we be just call that out? The existing one would remain. And right. right. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to jump ahead? <laughs> okay. Sure. So, Jane Moran, 70 East Main Street. Um, so a couple of weeks ago when I was here, I had inquired about um, the trailhead parking and if it was large enough to accommodate um, horse trailers, just thinking outside of the box as a resident. Um, and a horse one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Besides that, um, it, we looked into the halt parking on, that is already there and it can't be accommodated. Um, it's very difficult to change that once it's set into place through the state. So I reached out to Mr. Nation and he was very receptive to trying to work this into the plan. So I'm here tonight to ask the planning board to consider an, um, this request to include a site that Mr. Nation has worked with me to provide for a couple of, um, an area for horse trailer parking. Awesome. Now, the reason why I've pursued this is because it does abut the town um, Cameron Woods, mm -hmm. and there is existing not only trails for hikers, but there are existing equestrian trails on that property to the extent where the Bay State Trail Riders Association has um, donated money to imp make improvements back there. So this would be a wonderful asset for the residents of Hopkinton if this could be considered. And I want to thank Mr. Nation for working through this. This would be a unique opportunity, I believe, for the town. I don't know of any other place where this has been uh, been available. It's an option. And this conversation came up. and I. Would just like to thank Mr. Nation for trying to make this possible for us. Oh, 
So that would be, yeah, so that's where we are now. We're here asking you if you would consider that. He's, we've worked together on a site and then we have to talk about that more. So that there's more discussion needed, but there's a plan in place to widen the entrance? To the there's a, a, I could probably let Mr. Nation speak to okay. that yeah. Yeah, so specifically. We, um, initially, uh, Jane and I walked it, uh, we looked at the plan and, and, and walked it, and we, and we were thinking of, well, I was thinking of down here at the base, you know, alongside Wood Street, especially in here. Yeah. There's a lot of room we yeah. could grade back, yeah. the slope sets back. But then, um, so we walked and I thought it was all pretty good. She called me a couple hours later and said it doesn't really work. The way the trailers have to be unloaded, right. some out the side. We don't want the horses the going into Wood Street. Up and yeah. You know all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then, so then my thought was to come up here and, and just do a trip. Get them off, off the road. Here, off yeah, Wood Street. The street. The and, um, street. Yeah. And make a spot up there. I think you could fit a couple rigs. Uh, 35 feet to 40 feet long in this area on this side and I think this might be a stretch for Concom but maybe even back a couple in here but we probably um, that might be, be a little wet back it. there isn't it no actually well, it's uh, not it's it's doesn't appear to be I thought water over it's there. There. It's no it's further up on the hill it's okay. that's Currently where there's, there's a little field lot, driveway okay. so the, um, it's where the Lincoln's park okay. so <laughs> Um, so the good part about it is that it doesn't impact any homeowners, really. You know, it's not like you're parking trailers out in front of somebody's house. And it's pretty, uh, it's pretty quiet. And it's isolated and, and quiet. Uh, mm -hmm. and there's a field there. All by itself. And You've won our favors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Question though, um, how the horses get to the woods? Well, um, we talked well, about that. Right, al right along here, they walk alongside the road. And they come down here, hit the hundred foot. And then they're and they're gone. That's so cool. They just have, I think, several hundred acres out there. Yeah. On the Cameron Woods. And it's pretty exciting. Actually. It is very exciting. Yeah. So yeah. Through the project chair. Yeah. What kind of uh, surface would be good for that? Crushed stone. Mm -hmm. Would it be okay for the horses? Yeah. Yeah, yep. Stone? It doesn't need to be asphalt. It can just be gravel. Gravel, though, not. You'd prefer gravel than crushed stone, right? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're not there stone. very long. We're there a couple hours. Just something so that um, get, most of the trucks have four-wheel drive anyway, but that mm -hmm. we wouldn't well, get we bogged know. down in the mud if we were in the mm -hmm. field. Right. And also dust control and everything else. I think the crushed stone packs itself. And it does. It gives itself a little bit more leeway to underfoot. Yeah. Yes. So, so my suggestion, and you can all take it if you want, but it, I, I believe that crushed stone would probably be the medium that is really best suited for that. It's flat up there too, so it's not going to wash. I used to own horses myself. So yeah. Doesn't Crush Stone have a pointy end of it that would stick right no. up under the hook? No. no. You'd be no, surprised. That's what they use underneath no. the base. Correct. Okay. So it's so currently record, used. Uh, Jane is uh, also a public safety, uh, former public, sa public safety officer, being chief of police at Salt Bro, and she's a chairman of the Upper Charles Trail Committee. So yes. She has a lot of experience in this area. And continue to learn. <laughs> we all do. We all do. Yes. Hopefully. Uh, thank you for your feedback yeah, and thank awesome. you for you guys working with well i want to thank everybody for reaching outside of the box thinking outside of the box That's really perfect. unique thank, thank you, you. <coughs> all right uh, i just had a question so sure so gonna, there'll be sidewalks along the whole road section. both yeah. sides um, or one side uh, well, I would think you'd only want to have uh, open space. Typically, you'd only want to have the sidewalk on one side. Okay, but there will be a sidewalk. Have you thought about which side it would be? Um, I, I would. Inside. I would do inside right. loop and then connect it up on Wood Street. And right. People can walk. Makes and, yeah. Makes sense. Makes, sense. makes great sense. Great. Any other comments on item D, section D, the traffic from the planning board or members of the audience? Uh, stormwater management kind of ties sorry, in. Sorry, Frank, sorry sure. to back you up because sure. the traffic has got a bunch of different stuff on there. Um, we probably should talk about later no lid, low impact design. Is that where we should discuss this? I don't understand what your question is. Um, do we want curbs or do we not oh. want curbs? Um, well, um, I. 
I think that um, I, I did I did talk to Jennifer about this, and um, she indicated to me that, that that the lid is the way to go. But that's the town's preference. But I think we're going to be with a sort of a hybrid here um, because of some of the slopes. I think we're going to. I would I would prefer to do conventional in some of the really steep slope and some of the steeper slopes, and then you know revert back to the. But, uh, just uh, do what do what makes sense. It sounds right. I'm sorry for the chair. Sure. Um, it sounds right. And and to your point is that the, the down slopes, if if we have granite or whatever, um, right two minutes. Yes. What will happen is in heavy rains, the the, the flow will run down the roads, and then we got a, another issue. So, I I believe the hybrid is the the proper way to go on this is, and thank you for doing that consideration. Um, and to your point that we've got those sidewalks in there, yeah. and I'm going to cover it before he goes any further. You'll have that that uh, the lineage between the sidewalk and the street, the two foot buffer between those. Yeah. Green belt. Yeah. Green belt. Right. Yeah. So thank you very much for that. But I just do have one other question. This will the sidewalks be at the grade the level of the street or raised the curb level okay yeah, curb. okay good thank you so I'm, I'm fine with the common hybrid approach yes see but you're getting help from the audience with the right. answer <laughs> <laughs> i know that the grades are are very we'll call it nine percent and down okay um up in <clears throat> legacy farms north we had all they put in um, pervious sidewalks. I was wondering if you can, would consider that um, on some of the areas that you have. Um, I, I, I've looked into it. We have looked into that in the past, and um, and we're told by every paper we've talked to that it doesn't work. It jams up, and if it's if it's not maintained, right, it's, it has to be blasted out or cleaned yeah. or something. It's got to be vacuumed out. Vacuum. Yeah, back and. Um, I don't know. I, I just people talk about it and about how great it is that they're using it, and I just wonder okay. what the end result really is. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. I haven't heard very many people uh, think you know long term seeing it work out, especially in colder weather. Right? So it becomes impervious. Yeah. Yes. If you don't vacuum it and maintain it, it becomes impervious. And in general, it's used from on a bigger right. area, like a parking lot or highway or something, if you have it on a sidewalk, it will probably not uh, perform as it should. Okay. Well, thank you. There's a question, a functional question, I guess. Is it uh, like a shop vac kind of vacuum or more heavy duty than that? I would assume they'd, they'd have something the mounted on a truck, like a, something that cleans up catch, catch basins that size. Of the so homeowners really couldn't maintain it themselves? I think so. I think Bill may have some expertise in that. Bill? Well, see some people rolling their um, back and forth. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, porous pavement works well with well maintained. You know, you get a you get a nice building with you know it's good. They get on a landscape company. They're taking care of their property all the time. For a for public roadway that's the town's going to maintain in the future, I would assume. Um, you know they're going to have to come back and repair it sections, and so it's a there's a, there's a few more things to think about. Uh, I don't. I also don't know. I can't remember what the soils are on this site. I don't know that. It's a mixed bag. Huh? It's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. Uh, you get some slopes. It's it's probably not the site to be doing a whole lot of low impact development techniques uh, because of kind of the the mix of the, the soils and the, and the topography, uh, probably some erosion issues. Uh, it's it's going to be heavily wooded, so it's going to be susceptible to leave organic debris, stuff like that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions about sidewalks? <coughs> no, I think just to summarize, though, we're, we're leaving it up to the developer on the topic. Right, to use his judgment, and I'm, I'm fine with that. For comparison, uh, Hunter's Ridge, similar type of project, similar type of layout, um, former farmland, woods around it, uh, <coughs> so it makes it a little bit less wooded. Uh, 
the sidewalks there are are, are just regular uh, asphalt and uh, <coughs> I was, I was he was surprised I was complimenting him so well. He's a little choked up. Uh, Item right. stormwater management. What do we? Uh, how do we cover that without specific feedback? So um, I, I just want to give you. So this is a preliminary phase. So they, you know, what, it isn't expected that they would have the all the stormwater design. Uh, it is. Uh, a fairly conventional, you know, I, I don't see a reason why they wouldn't be able to meet the standards uh, with their next submission. So I, d I don't know that you want to spend a lot of time on stormwater, but. Um. I want to just point out that uh, we would like to request a waiver on uh, uh, to be able to place some of the detention areas in the buffer. Um, we do not want to have any obstruction for structures, just the detention areas, it would be a good a good place to to put them. And the bylaw specifies they cannot cover more than five percent of the uh, of the open space and <coughs> we will prove that they will not. At this point we don't have a idea where the detention ponds yes, are going. We do well no we do. We just up there's yeah. one in the middle? Yeah, I don't think we're going to hold you to it if, yeah, if no, you move them around. They're certainly just, um, yes, <laughs> they do. We need a special guest up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that special. Otherwise, nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> a little leaner here. It's a couple of potential spaces we're considering is one behind. Uh, lot 24, and then coming down here, another, another couple of detention bases, and then we come around the corner here, so we're kind of in the low spot. And specifically, the ones that have come around the corner are the ones that we need a waiver because they're within the 100 foot, from within the 50 foot buffer of the wetland. Well, uh, it's for it's the fact that they're within the open space is the is the reason that we'd be asking you guys for. Uh, for a waiver, and it says specific, it's specifically in your regulations that we that they are allowed. That if you can remember back, we actually originally showed a portion of the septic system in the mm -hmm. buffer as well, and we moved that out because mm -hmm. that wasn't listed in the allowable exceptions. Is there a percentage that they allow? Five percent, which would be well, well below under that. <coughs> to see that so specifically how many, planned out. Yeah, how many waivers would you be looking at for? So this would be one of them? Two. Two of them. One, one is about uh, the, the road yep. uh, interfering with the buffer, and the other one would be about uh, detention costs. So the defense? Yeah. Sure. Yep. So the detention ponds, how many are we looking for? They don't know exactly we yet. We don't know exactly yet because we haven't, you know, we just changed we don't go through the process of uh, determining all the drainage because at this point we're still making sure that this that you guys are happy with where the where the lot where the road goes. So um, I I wouldn't expect it. I think they would say pretty much where we're showing them in that general area because it's coming uphill and then going downhill. You're gonna kind of be in the low areas. So um, I would expect that they would generally stay in where that where we're showing them but we don't know specifically but on the conceptual plan on the conceptual plan itself though they they are still upland they're within the upland as and not as opposed to being down lower they're not oh. one of no they're down they're of, the low land one of not not the top part of the chart <laughs> The top one to the left is behind 24 is, is upland next to a ridge that goes down to- No, this is all the low right. land, right? The two, but the two on the lower land this is are the still on a ridge area. Right, but this is, yes. They're just, you're not putting them in the highest spot. Right. So you collect it, you're only allowed to let it run so far anyway, and then you collect it and, um, and actually, so they're not all down at the bottom, I guess. Yes, that's correct. 
but they're in general on the lower portions of the site. Even though this is up, it's act, this is all much higher. It's, it's the lower end of the upland. The, yeah, exactly. It's, it's still, it's still like the edge of the ridge, and then it's the wet slope. So, so just to follow up on the question, it, is, there, is that a granite ledge over there? Is that kind of what it is? The granite. Yeah. So um, retention ponds would be kind of tough. Would it not? So, uh, so during the process, they'll have to do some test pits in, in any locations that they they propose. Uh, in, you know, best best management practices, whatever infiltration, bioretention, whatever whatever they choose to use. So they'll have to uh, do a test pit to determine uh, seasonal high groundwater permeability. And also, if there's any kind of, you know, restriction in terms of infiltration, because you'll want them to drain within the, the three days. So. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that to the forefront. So they'll they'll have to do some homework to to, to design all these. So conceptually, where we're at is that we're, we're generally okay with the idea of it, but we need to see as you guys move forward. One, one final sure. question, and I might ask Elaine. So this variance for putting the Tension ponds on open space. Is there anything that we should be concerned about? Is it just housekeeping? So it's a waiver and not a variance. And when that regulation was considered, the thought was it, it could be okay, but it should be subject to review by the board because it might be a small area that's cleared and and, and prepared, or it could be a large area. So that's something for the board to, to consider. And also, the board may want to have it designed like a natural landform that it fits in instead of a square or something so Thanks. gives the board the ability to review it thank you okay utilities uh water fire cisterns sewer gas electric phone cable and then uh to start from there general overview um we've had discussions with uh, the gas company about needs and what do you, do you guys have any? I don't think there's going to be any gas there, is there? Uh, no. Uh, well, there's no gas. There, so. no. I don't think it happens. Well, there's gas down Wood Street. Yeah. There is gas. There is gas on Wood Street. Maybe. Maybe. Does, it, does it get naked? We haven't followed up. With Maybe gas. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely water. Um, Town water? Is that yes. We'll know. try for gas. Yeah. Uh, A lot of people like that. Yeah. At what point do we ask uh, DPW if they can handle, uh, how much water they can handle for this area of town for the water system? So have they, they've given they, formal yeah, approval? So yeah. their formal approval is? Okay. Yeah, but we gave them a number of houses, bedrooms, and all that, and uh, we checked with them just a week or so ago, and we're still good, so. And we have anything like on paper for that, or? I don't, I don't, I don't doubt you at all, but. Um, I'll just look to the files right <laughs> I think we have an email. Do we have a letter? I forget. Uh, Chris Nation. Uh, and the folks at home, Chris. <coughs> Thank you. It's covering all the bases. Yeah, I've worked with uh, directly with Eric Cardi on it, and he assures me that he can sign something based on that number of houses once we have plans that show details. I was just asking if there was a well for that for the house on top yes, of the hill. Yes, on top of the hill is the house. Because uh, there, you got a, a, a quite a bit of top, topography, so I don't know. If just got to do some water testing and make sure there's enough pressure to get the water up there. And that's a very good point, right, guys? I mean, um, Thank you, Chris. Your math about uh, bedrooms and the septic system and the over <coughs> overview of the plan when you move the shared septic uh, into the area where it is now. Um, do we have those numbers that you gave the DPW to, to, to match those up and make sure we're all on the same page or 
How do we make sure we're on the same page with that? Well, we would. It, um, that was more of a question for Elaine. I'm sorry, kind of. Oh, yeah. so what was the? I've known her for ten years, but I, she's she's kind of new back on the job. So you're testing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you look at somebody else and ask you the question? And I'm new, I'm new, I'm new. Um, all right, so we discussed already historically the uh, shared septic system plan that they put forward. Uh, we, she, she's already mentioned tonight where we you know, near the buffer zone and they moved it back. Um, and then there's calculations based on the number of buildings that we've uh, approved for this law conceptually. Um, but the mathematics for that, we're, do we have that on record and does that I think the Board of Health will, right. will set right. those limits yeah. based on the design of the septic right. system. And then when building permits are issued, that will be something that will, will be monitored. So that's in process, mm -hmm. and as we move forward, we get feedback from the Board of Health, they get feedback from the Board of Health, they get approved, yeah. and okay. Quick question. Sorry, Phil had a comment. I did, just for my own learning education, I understand about the pressure needed to push the water up around there, but what, how would a well relate to that situation whether there's an existing well yeah I was just wondering if he had uh, public water to that house already oh, okay. so if they right. had public water already okay, understood thanks so and just I guess more for a talking point uh, if there cannot be town water there might be able to be well water because the highest property does have a well um, but we don't, you know, it's future stuff. Contingency planning. Yeah, if it's a good well, we may stay with it. Uh -huh. you know, right. The existing uh -huh. houses, the house, house we may stay with them. Uh -huh. Right, because uh -huh. that house is staying. Yeah. No need to reinvent the wheel. They can certainly have the option to join the town water. Some people like it. Some water. I know plenty of people that have <coughs> town water that have been putting in wells in certain towns, so. I like my well water. That's something. Plenty of people feel that way. Uh, item G, open space, uh, remaining land ownership and access. Um, yeah, and just for the record on this concept plan, that triangle of land left over for 495 is yeah. where? Um, this being a new current. I've been tracking that down. I've been working on that. And, um, um, the Sala's lawyer thinks it's his, it's theirs, but he's, we're looking into that. If, by the time we're done, well, I think we'll have that, so it's just part of the open space. But it sounds like it's going to be relatively easy to do. Hopefully. Uh, we heard from Jane about trails and your excellent horse plan. Uh, Review by other boards committees. Uh, Lane, is there other people we need to hear from? Other, we've We've heard from the fire department, we've heard uh, we need to hear from water or what they'll hear, we're hear from them through the process that they go through, board of health, same idea. Any other boards we should be aware of? I'm not aware of any unless you've identified any during your review. Yeah. Cool. Uh, affordable housing, flexible community development. Do we have time to talk about this tonight or are we have until 10? We have about five more minutes. Uh, yeah, that's why. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't hear what you said, Amy. Oh, I just yeah. want to make sure we left time. We've got about five, five more minutes. Right. Um, but I think I would pay the fee on the affordable. When do we have to decide this? Uh, if we accept that or not, Elaine? If that's. Is that one of your applications to the board? Uh -huh. yes. yes. Yeah, that's a special yeah. permit decision that you'll make. And we'd like to give them. Open, open space in the town. I think that's what the town prefers. Mm -hmm. And so be that's under a restriction. Yeah. Um. Quick question about process. I was just thinking Ken had gone through the process with us historically, but some of the newer members haven't worn on the board. John might be able to cover that better than, definitely would be able to cover that better than I could. I was actually asking a different question, but go ahead. What well, I just wanted to question about the process of our our, um, our plan here, our outline. So this is just for um, conceptual plan, right? 
Do we go through this whole thing again for detailed plan, or do we just kind of? Well, what happens then? They'll, they'll have a more detailed plan that then would need to be. This is an open space plan vote that's different than the actual. Wait. So it's a special permit that allows it to move forward to the definitive stage. And so many of the outline items will be the same because there'll be detailed information right. on each of those. Right. So where we just went through the drainage. Yeah, we'll just jump into it. It'll be okay. So the answer is yes. But we'll go through this yes. outline again. Pretty Thank you. So now yeah. so, so one vote was on a conventional plan. But this is a lot <coughs> property could handle. Right, 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 right. And this is the next vote would be on the open, open space. space. Right. Um, it's a special and bylaw. And special permit allows us to move forward with concom and get kind of stuff, you know, melding the two. Yeah, once we have a, an, an approval from you on the, con uh, on the conceptual, then it gives us enough <coughs> foothold to be able to move forward with finalizing the design and being able to move forward with um, filing with the notice of intent with the Conservation Commission. Um, and, so, and run that so will there be a vote tonight on the conceptual yeah, plan? We, can we try to get to that? Well, vote? I'm just wondering, is, is, first of all, yeah, is there a vote? I, do you want me to just... Let's, let's yeah. cover the affordable uh, housing he just He just did. No, we have to vote on that, oh. actually. Yeah. So if you look, Frank, look on... Uh, the memo on page seven. Carter died. <laughs> uh, so the board action is to vote to determine that the plan complies with the special permit yes. criteria. Special permit criteria uh, shall be granted only if the planning board finds each of the following. The development meets the purpose of an open space and landscape preservation development as described in section 210-106. Uh, B, the development standards contained in section 210-112A, 1 through 4 have been met. C, the common space is designed in accordance with the standards set forth in section 210-113B. Number D, the common space is designed in accordance with the standards set forth in section 210-113C. E, the parcel could be developed as a conventional subdivision under existing local, state, and federal land use regulations. Number F, the open space and landscape preservation development provides for efficient use and delivery of municipal and other services and infrastructure. Special permits where granted must be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the zoning bylaws and may be subject to appropriate conditions. So with that being said, you know, I, 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 we've got a, a minute or so, and I'm, I'm saying I, I think we should put it to a vote to, um, to give the special permit <coughs> under the circumstances that have time constraints right now, and they, they're sure. here, and we've got so little left to do, and they're, they're working well with us on, on all of this. Sure. I, I, here's what I think, though. Uh, we, should, we haven't really covered affordable housing, flexible community development as a concept, as how we have to make a decision on that one section. So, um, we vote on that. Elliot, yeah, can we space. vote on that and then just do that? Elaine, Elaine, can is that something that they can do as part of the definitive? Is that is that because it's a separate special permit, correct? They can do it at either phase, but you've submitted the application now, so it's for the okay. now. I'm just. So I was just but it could be a decision to be made at a future meeting, it doesn't have to be made at this meeting. So we could decide the open space tonight but leave the flexible development. Correct. We could continue, continue that okay. hearing. Okay, so could we make a motion to to Elaine, could we make a motion to have this second? <laughs> do you have some potential conditions? I mean well, don't I don't I don't have any potential conditions. I don't know if the board the rest of the board does, but I think that, that we've covered they're, they're, they're extremely working with us in all aspects and phases of this, and I, and I think that their conceptual plan is, is giving them the, the green light to, to, to give us the answers that we're going to be looking for in the future. So with that all being said, and the time constraints that we have, I'd rather have them walk out of here with a, with a, a, a vote of yay or nay so that Quick, they can... If I may? Yeah. Just 
I just wanted to make sure that the lane was glued into some special conditions. Do you think we, are there are certain ones that you have in mind or are we? Well, they've applied for a couple of waivers, so you want to give them some guidance on that. Do we need to wait for the CONCOM? Your decision is independent of them. I okay. mean, they do have the, deli the delineation. Um, the plan is going to evolve. It's conceptual, so it will be all evolved through both boards. Okay. So structurally, we could approve the open space plan as um, we basically have covered everything except for the affordable housing aspect of it. Um, I think the question is the variances. And there are some standard conditions. Um, unfortunately, we don't have we them don't here have tonight. Like that. Um, oh, we don't can I make a suggestion? Can we take a look at um, the next meeting of February 12th? Does anybody have a problem with starting at 7 o'clock? Are you not here? Or are you here? I am involved on the okay. floor. Well, let me add, usually uh, Jennifer would have, she. I think Kobe mentioned that we haven't watched the last yeah. video anyway, so. Right. Oh, you're not voting anyway. Right. 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 So. Structurally, Jennifer would have a list of. Um, what, excuse me. Would I would I be no. back in the vote? <laughs> would, I, would I be back in the vote other than this night tonight? You can miss one meeting. Yeah. And watch, watch that video, but, but, but if you, you miss another you miss one, one, okay. You can't. Right. right. Okay. Well, let's 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 see though. If, if Jennifer would generally have a list of um, <coughs> variances, conditions, conditions, right? And um, and they're the standard, and then we'd add a couple as we go along. Right now, things like uh, the horse park and trail, would that be a condition or would that be? I think that that's a bonus on Mr. Yeah. Nations. With this, but with the sidewalk, would that be a condition? <coughs> well, can't that be a condition on? Well, we do definitive. definitive. Okay. We're, we're already, so question for you. <coughs> uh, our two missing members, is this the first and only? Yeah, Cliff is the only one that's yeah. listed. Okay. Kelly and Arfan. Okay. Cliff is the only one who's listed on our agenda okay. as having to okay. catch up. So can we do, even though you're going to be out, you're going to be out, but you can't vote anyway. I, I can vote if I watch the... But not if you yeah, miss two. You miss the next. <coughs> you're going to miss the 12. Okay. Um, be the that being said, if you want to grant a question tonight and you list a couple of items, that we don't have to have them all you know, totally written out, but if you know what they are and if we miss a few standard conditions... It's usually mirror stuff that's in the bylaw anyway. I mean, if you want to take a vote tonight, I would love to take a vote tonight, but I'm not comfortable without our standard conditions. Uh, it, it's unfortunate oh, we're kind of in this gap. Uh, what I would suggest, based on the time, is can we come in at seven o'clock at the next meeting? I can. I can. You guys comfortable with that? And we'll we'll sure. quickly do it at the beginning of the next meeting. With some standard conditions and, and do it address it that way. Elaine, am I still able to if if there if 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 that if this goes the way that he just said, and I'm able to watch that that aspect, I can still be in on the vote. Right? If you're here, miss one meeting okay. and you watch the, huh? the video. If you're here, if you're here, if you're the twelfth, oh, you're here on the twelfth. Yeah. Um, uh, well, you know what? I might may, make arrangements to come back. Just okay. it's a motivated planning board. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's do a continuance. You can participate remotely. Remotely. As long as there's a core yeah. present. Yeah. Oh, that's I beautiful. Did that. And it's live. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have to watch the tape. Yeah. And you have to sign the affidavit yeah. before you go. Yeah. And then participate remotely. All right. Okay. I did that though. So <coughs> can I get a motion to continue until 7 p.m. on the 12th? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Would, so we can. Okay. Sir. I, don't want I just want to know the last meeting. Would we. Um, Continue about the same date. Yeah, we're doing seven, but <coughs> so we've got some time. Okay. So, so there's another, another, there's another, 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 another reason for Chris to try to make it. That's right. This we meeting have seven, That's seven thirty, right. and uh, yeah. thank you. I should apologize. I had really no idea we'd get through the rest of yeah. all the list pretty much, except for like <coughs> one item, uh, which we'd probably can get through quickly if we had a little bit more time. But uh, I, I thought okay. we didn't That's really right. do. So, so we. Thank you. Okay, thank you, and thank we'll you. see you at 7 o'clock. Hey, thank you very much for thank working you. so thank thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Fran, do you want to go over the next day? Yeah. For what? Drama. My pressure. Oh, no. You're okay. Hey. We, we all call for the next. No, Brian, I just don't trust just anyone with loosely.
implementing the lid stuff, you know, so. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's a real expression of trust right there from him. It is. You're doing a great job, Ron. Thank you. So as the uh, project liaison looking at the, so to speak, on the ZAC committee, a representative, I'll so I'd like to continue on the articles that the uh, Zoning Advisory Committee, ha uh, committee has recommended to the Planning Board. Um, John Catino, who is the chairman of ZAC, I'd actually just come up, John, and just as a point here, we actually, um, I think we voted on the first article already. We did. So we voted on the first article, John. So we'll look at articles two through eight. Maybe just to kind of a quick recap on each, and then we can do, we can vote on each of the uh, articles. By the way, the first one failed miserably. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was actually an interesting section of session of Zach this year. We had uh, an unprecedented 20 members. Um, You're welcome. Pardon me. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, well, it meant, it meant that we actually had to have a, a, an 11 person quorum, so we actually missed uh, missed it a little bit. Uh, several members didn't, uh, couldn't make uh, many of the meetings and one actually never even showed up. But all in all, we managed to uh, get through, uh, as you saw, these eight articles. And uh, I'm glad that we, got, we already got through the, uh, the uh, first one. Um, the second one, uh, the uh, statutory protection for building permits and special permits. Um, this was actually a housekeeping one that uh, Elaine brought up. So I'll let you let her speak to this one. So the statute changed, um, and so we are we required that children are allowed to hear what the statute says, um, gives people an extra six months to exercise a building permit or a special permit. Housekeeping. Not groundbreaking, right? No. Okay. No, that was the first couple of days. Yeah. The um, different <coughs> one. Wait, yeah. we, we need to vote on these? Or? Yes. I'll move putting the second one on the warrant. Second. second. All in favor? All, All in favor? All favor. Okay, you can do it. All opposed? <coughs> All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the um, <coughs> third one is a fine for zoning violations. The uh, state uh, modified its state laws stating that we could go up to uh, $300, uh, up to. That's one of the things we had to. Uh, we stressed in the meeting, $300 to be leveraged by, by the municipalities for a zoning violation. Now we uh, checked, checked with, uh, <coughs> Chuck, uh, like, well actually right now I'd like to uh, actually um, here express my heartfelt condolences uh, for myself and the Board of Selectmen to uh, Chuck and Marie and to the entire Catholic family for the sudden passing of uh, Chucky last Friday. Um, my thoughts and prayers are out with them. Um, but uh, that being said, uh, we checked with Chuck, and, and we, some people were, ups were nervous that uh, we'd be putting a uh, you know three hundred dollar fines to, to people that were in violation. But um, we are a community of neighbors, and uh, I don't know if this we've ever levied fines against anybody because everything tends to work out. Uh, we just thought that we would go in line with the uh, with the state uh, recommendations and, and put it at three hundred dollars. And the recommendation from Zach was, uh, well, rather than you know changing the, the bylaw every time the statute changes, we'll just reference whatever the maximum in the law is. <laughs> so that's what that. Yeah, so we won't have to revisit this one. So don't have to go back. Agreed. Any questions so, from board members? I make a motion to so so second. Second. Uh, any other further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, abstain. Motion carries. Number four. Now, number four came from the uh, Board of Appeals. Um, they, they, they came with us with a, with a few, and this one is very similar to uh, they, what we'll see in a little bit, the uh, number seven, the accessory dwelling unit. The Board of Appeals asked Zach to review the conversions of residential property law adopted in 1991, which allows for the conversion of a single family home uh, into up to four rental units by a special permit. Um, the uh, board did express, express uh, specific concerns that there that the should be owner occupancy. Um, we just didn't want to be turning a lot of our single family homes into uh, multifamily dwellings. So um, uh, we recommended that, uh, that we should change it from four to a two. Um, we had a, 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 a 
12 uh, zero vote with one abstention. Um, but uh, we should have, they, they recommended the owner occupancy and uh, reduced the number of rental units to two. Has this been a big issue in town or what was it responding to? No, it, it was just the things that came up. Elaine might have some points on it, but it was just stuff that, that when, when the ZBA came to us with some of these, we um, uh, just wanted to try and accommodate them. And, and with the, uh, you know, we had, we had 13 people that day. So we got a good uh, overview of what people were thinking. The, the Board of Appeals had a recent application, and it, you know, it's been a number of years before somebody had applied. And um, they were kind of uncomfortable with this file. It didn't have enough in it for them to go on, so they really wanted Zach to take a look at it. Uh, and they're kind of uncomfortable with the, the four rental units. With the no concept of occupancy. four. Right. Do we have many of those? I think there have been eight applications since 1991. And all approved or not, not approved? I think they were approved. May have been one denied. So, so it really isn't a big one. Well, it's a big I don't follow it in then. So it's not a lot, but I think there was. No, no, I'm not worried about that. I'm just wondering what the problem it responds to necessarily. I think there was concern for the future. Right. Just tighten things up. Yeah. Concern for the future. Uh, converting single family <coughs> to rental homes of that magnitude, of four units, with no other occupancy. But that's it a, went from owner no owner occupancy to owner occupancy and from four to two. two. So that's two right. levels of change. Right. So so the so this is you know that's now it's up to the planning board to really look at look at it and see you know it, you're absolutely right that um, with only eight in twenty eight years not a press twenty seven years no. right it isn't it isn't uh, absolutely but that's the that's the great thing about having a a ZAC committee that meets every single year, year that we, we tend to get into the minutiae at this point. And, uh, but because a lot of communities uh, change uh, dozens of bylaws and they, they do like every five or 10 years. So we try to stay ahead of some of these things. So, but, so again, if, if, if the planning board does believe that we got into too much minutiae, please. Uh, you know. well, I'm just gonna make the point that um, I don't actually have a, a big objection to the owner occupancy. I can see how that that's valuable. Um, but I also, uh, you know, um, am mindful that a variety of housing styles, particularly if it, there is owner occupancy and there's, you know, pride and ownership and, and, uh, and upkeep and so forth that we can rely on particularly, um, it's better not worse to have a broader variety. I know a lot of people can't get, that's my personal, oh, yeah, my personal feeling. I can see that it would be attractive to have that option. So. Can we amend we that? Be, we before you this stage, before right. yeah. yeah, so yeah. at this stage, oh, yeah. just to put it on, but we yeah. have the ability to amend it, Absolutely. and then even if we don't want it, we we have we're not voting on recommending it yet. I just have one question about clarity of this. Mm -hmm. um, so if somebody has a single family home and they want to rent it. That's not covered by this because they don't need to convert it to right. This no, is only no, like making one residence into two, right? This is all. This is all conversions. Yes. Question along the lines: David says this would, this would kick in if it was a, a tri three-family triple decker, and is two other units, and then people living there, uh, and say they're. I don't know if that's even a situation in Huntington, but no, this, say, is, this doesn't apply to that. That no. that would already be a multi-family home. This is a conversion of a single family. Let's say they convert a three family, a single home family. big enough to have three families in it, to a three family, <coughs> and then the people die or retire to Florida, who someone has to live in the house from the family that owns the, the building, right? Uh, Owner occupied. Well, now we're getting to, now we're getting to number seven. So if, if, it's, if it's required to be owner occupied and it's no longer owner occupied, then it's a violation. And they can be charged $300 a day. <laughs> Up to, up to, up to. Can I make a suggestion because we're getting into stuff that we can get into after the exactly. public hearing, et cetera. And I, so the idea is do we want to do the placeholder and put it on the warrant with the idea knowing we can amend it or, or we cannot support it at a future I'm to put Why it didn't we go to three? Can I ask you that? Uh, uh, again, it was it was debated back and forth and there, was, there were uh, a couple people on the board that wanted that, that are just more into restrictive than than it's sort of what we really actually I think you were at that. Meeting. So what if I moved to put it on the warrant? I moved to put it on the warrant. We're already over the time. I understand this, but I need to ask this question. It, can why wouldn't we be able to amend it now 
for the warrant to three stories instead of four? Because you can do it right now. We're just doing a place. If I may, we're just doing the chair. placeholder. Then we have to go and let's let's do it. Oh, no, this is, this is just my pre presenting them to you. To you you're right. saying yes or no, and then you guys debate it when I'm. I would hate to do this on the backside and go down to two and then say, wait a minute, there we haven't even given this credence. No, That's your right, job. Right now, the, 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 what's on the table is whether or not we want to add this to the warrant, whether or not we want to modify it from two to three, whatever we can do that. As with any of them. Correct. We're or even drop it later on. To put it on the chair. warrant with the idea that after the public hearing and the public, we have the ability to understand it, then we can modify it. Are you okay with putting the general concept on the warrant? That's right. Because I want to think about it a little bit. Yeah, more I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence with this one. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I just okay. feel. <laughs> then I would we no, 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 That's, that's why we're right. right. It's, so it's any any other further group. discussion from board members? I'd like to know how you, what your stand print on, on this particular thing just to put in, yeah. in general to put it on and discuss it later. Well, that's the procedure. That's a procedure. That's what. That's what. How because it, works. it has to be subject to a public hearing, and again, we should listen to the public mm -hmm. and amend it based on the public hearing. Right. So I'm, I'm open to doing that. And what, what comes out of the public hearing and further discussion, we can then make a modification to it. But I think we need to kind of bring it up. Thanks. That's what's on and, the, and the biggest problem with that is that the public, a lot of public doesn't show up until it's in their in their lap. Right. And and so why would we circumvent any anything on, on that? So I, my, I still, I, I, well, I understand that. But <coughs> if we put it on and the language reads two, two story. It, it, it sends out a message to a lot of the residents that that that's our limit, and so I'm, I, I don't want to I don't want to circumvent that part of it. I, I would like the public to be able to. Well, that's why, that's why we're doing it. That's I think be happy. Yeah. so. Just, let's move to the. I, I think the objections have been stated. Let's yes. move vote on it. If it if we decide not to, that's fine. Is there a motion? I would make a motion for the place where we're on. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. So we got the ayes. All those opposed. Opposed. One, two. All those abstain. Abstain. So it's four to two to one. Just to comment while you're thinking about that, I. I think we just need to trust each other that we'll word it the right way. I mean, trust that's my that's well, my thing here. I don't no, I mean, that, huge, I, don't yeah. have, I don't have a huge angst about yeah, yeah. this. I just don't. I don't understand the drive, and I and I'm not. It's and that, it's, yeah, and I it think can we've go got whatever the, way it goes. Right, I mean, we're talking right. to, to the point. These are eight applications over 27 years. Right. right. So yeah, it's not. Do we need five? Yeah, no, it passed. Eight applications over twenty-seven years. Yeah. Right. On the public hearing, are we? Oh, oh. Appeals it's it's history. History. Yes. 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 Is there? A, this is this is in response to a deadline, right? For the public Correct. hearing for the warrant. Correct. Close on February sixth. Right. Thank you. Okay. When's our public hearing? Uh, oh, so this just puts it on. February twenty-six. This is the placeholder. Yes. February 20, the warrant closes February 26th. No, the warrant closes February 6th. Oh, There's no such thing. Public <laughs> hearing is February 26th. Okay. So you, guys have, um, you guys have a month to talk about it. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can take a question. Number five. Number five. Well, the Chamber of Commerce requested that Zach review the location of the hotel overlay district in order to include parcels which are viable for a hotel. Zach recommends two new areas, the removable, removal of one area, as outlined in the draft article below. Um, it's, uh, oh, I wish we had the map here. <laughs> Describe it to us, John. Um, basically, they, they wanted to uh, modify it in, in Industrial A, and, uh, and also in Industrial B. So we're talking about um, uh, up on South Street, was it, was it the, Basically, all along oh. South Street on the either side is different. Yeah. On the east side, yeah, because we have one side is the town lot. Correct. Right. Right. One side is 60 foot. One side is 45 feet. And, and also and behind my house. And then behind, and uh, over at uh, at the Elmwood Park. Park. Right. And then to remove some area down on Lumber Street where it was just not possible anyway. There was a small wedge on Lumber that, mm -hmm. to, to to Chairman's point, would not facilitate any type of hotel other than a tiny micro. Right, and so we just pulled that back just to give it a nice, neat delineation of where, where this could actually happen. And then there's there's a lot of detail in it that, that, that this will, you guys will have uh, a month to uh, look over. And, and what's our current floor restriction for hotels? 
No, this is this is just the area. This is just the area. No, I know, but it's yeah, putting it, a hotel it, it in that area. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. That's coming up. That's, that's coming up in. Uh, okay. Okay. So, I, that's number six. I move it to uh, put it on the warrant. Second. All right. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of putting it on the warrant, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. All those abstain. Motion carries. Number six. <laughs> number six. There you go. To uh, blindside. <laughs> Board Member Paul, uh, That's a the, way to avoid the that. Chamber of Commerce requested that Zach consider increasing the maximum height of buildings in the Industrial A and Industrial B districts. Discussion centered around allowing taller buildings to improve occupancy and reduce impervious surface by going up rather than going out. The dimensional parking requirements would remain unchanged. The first change involves removing a reference number of stories in the Industrial A district. The second change invol involves uh, removing the reference to the number of stories in the industrial B district. In those instances, the maximum height of the building would be set in feet only, with no change to the maximum height. The third change would increase the maximum building height in a portion of the industrial B district near the Route 495 Parkwood Drive within an area concurrent with the ho current hotel overlay district. So as you can see, there was a, 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 um, we were we okay. were putting down both uh, <coughs> stories, and it, 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 with some commercial applications, it doesn't really jive. So it? the way I understand it is, it doesn't isn't necessarily dependent on stories. The height was the important consideration, and more stories can go into height if we don't restrict the, the stories. But we aren't increasing the height, <coughs> and then um, I think in the ever. Um, ever burgeoning hope that we can actually attract a hotel. People are thinking that increasing the stories um, in one area would be helpful. Or increasing the, the feet. The feet. The, the feet. feet. I'm sorry, again, so, the feet. Right. right. But right. so tell me exactly where the increase in height is happening. The, um, was that, uh, like we, we did it <coughs> right along the- It's only uh, in that one section is of the hotel overlay district. Tucked in the 495. Yeah, we went from 40, we have 15 feet from 45 to, to 60. So that would be six stories if it were to be. No, that would be six stories residential. So you wouldn't be six stories right. commercial. It might not be, yeah, four. Right. So it could be, so it would be four stories. Four story density. You know, because I'm, that's what confused people, because if we tell them 45 feet or four stories, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't commercial right. 45 is four stories? Well, commercial buildings are 12 to 15 feet okay. per story. Per, per story. So 60 yeah. feet is about. Right, and then we, did, and then we just start talk, talking about. Typically, with the hotel, hotel, it would be 15 feet. Yeah. And it's <coughs> the height and feet that's the important thing, not right. how many stories. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. They, they could have open ceilings and lofts and stuff like that. Right, right. Yeah. 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 And, and that, and that it would affect the design if they wanted to have a large atrium, 20 foot tall atrium, and then just two floors over it. Well, we don't. Do we want to tell them they they okay, okay. have no, the, the design? Okay. Right. Okay. So we're just trying to pull off some of these restrictions, and maybe, you know, we keep tweaking this every four or five years. Maybe we might get so some kind of a boutique is hotel. The, is there a motion to add this to the warrant? I make a motion to add that to the warrant. Just. Yeah. Yeah. A second. That Zach had broken up into three articles to give people choices on these, so it's not one article for all these. It's three separate ones. Correct. Oh, the, I see. At the current time. Yeah. Yes. Is there a second? So, do we need placeholders for three? Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Further discussion? Any, any questions on clarification? Right. Yeah. Um, I, on the upper, on the top of it, underneath six, it says vote on number one unanimous. That means for all of them. But on draft article one, it only mentions South Street west of Hayward. That's where I was confused because I thought that was already sixty feet east of South Street. What he's asking for, though, is for, for to amend the area on Parkwood Drive to that mm -hmm. same. There's three different ones underneath. That's number two. Road. Parkwood is number two. That should be, right? And the only right. change is there is to eliminate a reference to number of stores. So there's a variation of whether they're all, they all get put on the warrant or pieces of this so idea get put on the warrant. So it needs more discussion, but as far yeah. as a placeholder, it's, yeah. it does, right? Just, just further discussion. I just want to make one quick comment, and we could address it further down the road too. But I think it's a little unclear. We should say, shall exceed 60 feet in height. I think.
think we should repeat in height instead of at the very last sentence. You know? Yeah. Just to call it out better. Clarify. Yeah. You... And, and so, if we could take this, I'm not throwing, I'm throwing a number out there, but we could take <coughs> 75 feet when we discuss it in the future. I mean, we're not, this is more uh, uh, what fits yeah. where kind of discussion as yeah. opposed to what, how high things are. I was thinking 100, 150 Generally. feet. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, any further discussion? All right, no further discussion. Uh, all members that are in favor, vote by saying. I still need uh, a second from someone. Oh, I don't know. Second. second. No, we did. I thought we did. So someone else. Sorry, did. Um, clarification, Elaine. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to make a vote on this because I'm a, I'm a butter right at the moment? Yeah. You can vote. Town light. Oh. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstained. <coughs> Motion carries. Sorry. Okay, number seven. Now, number seven is the accessory family dwelling unit. This was this one was um, uh, brought up again by the uh, Board of Appeals Chairman, and he requested that Zach take a look at some of the challenging areas of the accessory family dwelling unit bylaw, which originally adopted in 1993. The challenging areas identified are the provisions from which the applicants often request variances. Those areas include a desire to have larger units and detached units. The Zach, review, uh, Zach reviewed information on accessory apartments, including the bylaws of other towns. Hopton now has a multi-year history of activity under this bylaw, which was useful in considering changes to meet the needs of residents today and the future. The recommendation is to replace the existing bylaw with one that now incorporates the following changes. At the present time, all accessory family dwelling units required, require a special permit from the Board of Appeals. This new bylaw establishes a new mini accessory family dwelling unit uh, for one that would allow, that would be allowed by right and no special permit. Such units could not exceed 800 square feet and would be located entirely within a single family dwelling. Such permits are routinely granted by the Board of Appeals and it's felt that uh, a special permit is unnecessary. Special permits should be reserved for uses that require greater scrutiny and review due to their potential impacts. A special permit would be required for a standard accessory family dwelling unit, which is any such unit that is not included in the definition of a mini unit. They may be an existing new or single family dwelling that may be attached or detached. They may not exceed 1,000 square feet provided that this does not exceed one third of the entire gross area of a single family dwelling. In order to incorporate, incorporate the two types of units by right and by special permit, the format of the bylaw was restructured. So what, we, what this was, it was you know, with um, many people having to um, downsize or bring in their in-laws or parents or kids coming back from college and, picking the right major to get a job right away or one that pays as well as they wish. Um, that, uh, that they have a place to, that they can go as an actual s separate home. Because what, what, what was happening was people were um, working around our bylaw and just making a small um, breezeway to attach units to make it look like it worked. And they were uh, and, and building um, the accessory dwelling to the letter of the law, but um, not really the spirit of the bylaw, and 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 putting uh, putting the putting the, the the addition in a bad spot or not the ideal look from the street, and this is just going to giving the people a, a little more leeway and and, and um, allowing them to uh, um, bring in their uh, the, the other family members and 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 still have a nice streetscape. Would that be considered rental property? No, this was this was at, you know at, we 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 get into the uh, into the into the whole thing the, the definitions. If you look look uh, look further on uh, the uh, the accessory family dwelling may not be occupied by more than three persons, nor have more than two bedrooms. The owner of record of the lot shall occupy either the principal dwelling. Uh, unit or the accessory family dwelling, um, and if it's uh, if it's owned by a corporation, partnership, or trust, an officer or director of the corporation or a partner of record should be uh, 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 living in the home also. So, would they so we're trying to do this again. So this was really for for families, so that so that they could 
um, make this work. Yeah. So, so my question again is, would what if they were in violation in renting that apartment out to renters? Would that would that constitute uh, some sort of a uh, an offense on the, our bylaw? Three hundred bucks a day. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that so that that still goes back to that. Yeah. No. Yeah. You'd have to you'd have to catch them and chase them, right. but yeah, but but I'm, I'm I'm just saying that I mean that well, that's not out of the scope of anybody, and I, 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 right? Do no. that today. And when a property is sold, they have to submit an affidavit indicating that it'll be continued to be used um, in the same manner for a family member or someone over sixty. Okay. So, so it doesn't have to be a family member if it is somebody. Over it's 60? always there's always been an option for someone over sixty. That's what I, I thought, but I didn't I didn't remember yeah. hearing that as we were discussing it. Okay. We all learned something, didn't we? <laughs> so, any, there's a motion on the table to a second. add this in a second. Uh, any further discussion on the accessory family dwelling unit? I feel topic? like there's a lot of discussion coming on that one. I do too. Yes. Okay. Uh, it, and there was a lot of discussion. With yeah, this was, and that's why this one, if you notice, the, the other ones were all uh, a quarter page, a half a page, and that's why this one's three pages to get the definitions in there to, to explain. You know, again, why? And, and you know, this is this is this was a heartfelt one, because it's, it's it is very difficult for for a parent or a grandparent or somebody to have to come live with their children or grandchildren, or vice versa. Right. And, and um, this, and this will have sorry, yeah. enough to cut you off, John, but just from a timing perspective. Oh, sure. Thank you. So this will uh, require some additional discussion with the group. Sure. At this point, we're at a stage where we can actually take a vote. Uh, no more further discussion. So, all those in favor to add this, please signify by saying aye. 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 I'm going to abstain. I'm going to abstain. All Can those I, opposed? I didn't hear who moved. Oh, I have to move. I was moved. John second. 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 Thank you. All right, Chloe, my bad. Um, so, we got the approvals. Any, uh, all those in favor? All those not in favor? And all those willing to abstain? There's two abstentions. Okay. Got it. <coughs> was that? Oh, I'm You're sorry. My you two? I didn't say something. I'm sorry. You two abstain? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, 502. Motion passes. Number eight. Okay. Now, this is just a follow up on a vote that was taken at the ballot box uh, last year. The state law regret regarding recreational, recreational marijuana facilities has continued to evolve over the summer. At the 2017 annual town meeting in May, the town voted to impose a temporary moratorium until the law was settled <coughs> and the regulations developed. The town council has advised in order to complete the process, the town began to prohibit the uses. The town will need to adopt a bylaw that states the uses are prohibited. They have provided language adopted with other communities that has been approved by the Attorney General and a draft bylaw for Hopkins is below. It will replace Article <coughs> 33A, which is the temp temporary moratorium. The changes will only apply to recreational marijuana facilities. The bylaw regarding medical facilities would remain unchanged. So this is just a follow-up because we did a vote at the ballot box but did not do um, one at the at town meeting. Yeah, yes. So this is just a, a this motion. is the, the part two. two. This is part one of the two part. I mean, so we do it the other way around. To add this to the one. To, to add this to the one. The motion is second. There a second. A second, further discussion. Station. Real quick, just what the we can talk about. I would title it recreational marijuana facilities, not just recreational marijuana. Establishment. Establishment. Well, yeah, sorry. Well, it says facilities. <laughs> Just in the header, I'm just saying. It's not recreational marijuana, it's facilities. Facilities. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yes. Fair point. Frank? All right. I, I have a lot of issues with this. There's there's no, I review the people we pointed to Zach this year. There's not one doctor. Um, we shouldn't be telling medical establishment no marijuana testing facilities until the state clears stuff up. Uh, no uh, marijuana cultivators. Why do, we want to, why do we want to interfere with the legal business? Um, so the, uh, certainly so just, I, I just cut, not to cut it off, but fair point, excellent points, but are these germane to this discussion to add So I, I think putting anything forward that like this is, is dangerous in, in the long, long game. It's, uh, it's just uh, not right. So I'm going to vote against it. I'm going to agree with my vote against it, but I'm happy to hear more discussion. 
So the question at hand is, do we want to add this to the ballot? Is there right. a motion to I made the motion. add it to the ballot? I made the motion to add it. There's a motion. Is there a second? No, second. John seconds, Kobe. So it already was second. It was already seconded. That was discussion points. I think we're at a place to vote. All those in favor of adding it to the warrant, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. 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 It's four and three. Three. Four and three. And all those abstain? Okay. So four, three, zero. <laughs> it is added. I know we can't talk about it, but can we um, just keep a placeholder? Something happened to the request for lighting, and I don't know what happened to it. Uh, uh, we, we, we didn't have a quorum. Right. So, so I would like to ask my board members to put a placeholder on so we can do that work for the public hearing for internal lighting that becomes an external feature. I make a motion to place it on on, on uh, table. Is that what you said? Yeah. So can, can we do that? I mean, I, the planning board can submit an article uh, without say that we're not already doing that. Uh, I'll say it. Thank you. Okay. Oh, that's yours. Can we just have a title for it without having the... Well, we have drafts for okay. Zach. Is it internal I would, lighting? I would so certainly appreciate that. That's cool. Make a motion. I, I did. Um, she made a motion. I made the motion, right? <coughs> yeah. so, motion, I seconded. Yeah. All right. So, so discussion. John, so just, just as I'm drafting something, you know, retrofitting it, so it's just the in, the light, internal light that becomes an external. So internal light that mm -hmm. becomes an external feature is how, in my words, not not internal lighting that is a security feature for a facility or you know uh, necessary for safety in the case of a power outage, but internal lighting that becomes an external feature uh, for advertising and, and things. As we in reference to Univac. Okay, I was gonna. No, no, no name calling. No name calling. I'm trying not to pick on any company. Yeah, I know. Um, I know, but we have it here. We we have it. So it's inside. There's a, there's a motion and there's a second. Mm -hmm. uh, discussion points. Anything else? All right, put it up to a vote. All those in favor, adding this to the warrant as outlined by my colleague. Uh, Signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain? So carried. Thank you so much. Thank quick, you very much. Quick, quick, quick comment, yeah. question, correct me if I'm wrong. But well, we can actually withdraw any of these if we any, want to decide to right. right. We, we don't have, we, we don't have right. to vote to right. put any of them forward. Right, OK. Any, so. yeah. any other articles? While you're all here, uh, I don't <laughs> and I see the chair. Next time, uh, just back over to the chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. 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 Right. So, clear. so we could suggest future agenda items? Yeah. yeah future agenda. Future agenda item. Yeah. Hiring our new principal planner slash whatever. Is there a posting already? Yes. Okay. okay. See, the posting went out today, so how do we? It's gone out. It was out a couple weeks ago. Uh, why does he took it? Okay. I heard it was. Um, okay, we'll put it on. <laughs> like, what's, it, what's the meeting to do about that? Like, do we just, like, meet the people or? We can talk about the interview process and so forth. Perfect. Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you guys. Thank you. Frank, are you going to the Center School Reunion? <coughs>